Welcome to the Thinking Tackle podcast. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Now, what is it like to win the British Car Pangling Championships? Well, the two guys I've got in the studio today, Carl Palmer and Rob Burgess, know better than most. Guys, thank you very much for coming in. And we've got a rather amazing trophy here as well, which has got your name on it. Not quite. Good morning. Yeah, no, she'll, she'll get our name on it um, at the begin, uh, beginning of next year. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing our names on there. But it's... Uh, yes. Now, you don't even trust yourself, Rob, to have this in your house, right? <laughs> I don't. The little one and the dog combined would probably end up in 10 or, 10 or 15 pieces. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, held at my dad's. And um, whenever I visit, sort of once every couple of weeks, it's nice to walk past it. Give it know? a little shine. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, you know what, you've, you've, you'd, obviously, you just forget about it and you walk in the living room, it's like... Oh, bloody hell, we've done that. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, and I think we were just looking at it. The first one was 1999, I think. So there's plenty of prestige there, isn't there? Mate, that trophy's been going around for, yeah, 23 years now. And some of the names on there, you know, apart from 2003, a bit of a wonky year. Uh, <laughs> was that, is this Fairbrass and Clark? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, got, they got lucky in the draw, I think. Yeah. Nah, everyone's names on there are just, you know, awesome anglers. Between you two guys, t tell me about what what it means. What does the British Cup champion what does the British Cup Angling Championships mean in 2022? That is the one. You know, that doesn't get any better. Any better, it? any bigger. That is the one that keeps going every year. There's competitions, um, like the Eric's, for instance, comes and goes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's lasted the test of time and the trophy's still going around. And um, yeah, to win it is just, yeah, for, for us both, for all the match anglers out there, I'm sure that's the that's the one you want in your trophy locker. You know, mm. the check doesn't come into it. Honestly, it doesn't. Obviously, twenty right. grand's a lot of money. Yeah, ten grand each. But yeah, having that, having your name, you know, etched into that is um, it's a. Honestly, I never thought I'd do it because the stamp of angler out there these days is mm. just it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, you know, everyone that's in the final semi-finals, they're just. You can see it as, you, as you're fishing. You're just like, there's so many anglers now. Like, we've re-entered now for next year. And there's so many anglers in our qualifier. It's just like, this is hard work. Rattle mm. off some of the names that you guys are going to be fishing with then. Like, who were you fishing with this year? So, in the finals? Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the likes of Billy and Jamie. Just, you don't need to be going up against them, you know. Um, Taylor Card and Joe Button. John Button, sorry. Again, you give them a quarter of a sniff. They've had 10 bites. And these night. are guys that have become match specialists if you like aren't they really that a lot of their year is angled towards these competitions mate you get addicted to it yeah you d your your own fishing goes at the window and you know you're prepping for these matches you're practicing for these matches it's um a lot goes into it you don't just turn up at a match and go ah, let's just see what goes on we put the barbecue on if we get a few bites you know you you put a lot into it i mean you'd have been a kid really rob when this was first being run and it was big news at the time wasn't it mm -hmm. is it something you've had your eye on absolutely for as long as every year mate Every year I've entered, you know, um, never even podiumed before. Right. I think I've come fifth at Raysby once. Um, a lake's a lake, you know. There's there's always going to be that certain area where should win it on paper, you know. It, it, nine times out of ten, it does happen, you know. So you there's a little bit of luck on the draw side of things um, as well. So you need that to happen. Um, I but, mean, we're we're going to talk all through the the, the prep stuff, um, mentality. Hmm and physical preparation but talk to me a little bit um carl about how you became involved i mean did did rob come to you how, how do you know each other and, and and why do you work well as a team do you think um well we sort of i don't know it was getting it was, I think it was at wolvenstow the first time mm, i met you would have been yeah uh, when he was fishing with cav in the qualifier there and sort of i was actually fishing on my own then and, that was sort of and still I, absolutely smashed the match <laughs> made on his own you know ruined it ruined everyone <laughs> uh, but yeah then that was sort of got to know you a lot more then and then fishing together and then sort of last year hang on a minute so you you moved for carl and you kicked cab out did you oh, <laughs> <mate. laughs> Do you know cab's cab loves his big fish angling that's yeah. that's cab you know the matches i think it actually stressed cab out you know it didn't he, we we love spending time together he's one of my best best pals phenomenal angler but cab's you know he's a big fish angler he'd um yeah just stressed the life out of him but carl he's i've been doing this for many years and Honestly, he's like... Talk to me about Carl's strengths then. Everything. And that's what makes a good match angler or a good angler in general, you know, being a diverse, you know, nothing that you could put anything up to him, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's slamming up tight to the island, having to fish at stupid distances, zig fishing, floater fishing, solid bag fishing. It's all there. You can do it all. You know, and that's what makes, you know, um, a, 
bloody good angler. And what, ma you know? what makes a good partnership though, guys? Because, you know, two brilliant anglers don't necessarily make a good partnership. That's true. Yeah, you need to... Um, Just banks off each other as well, sort of is thing. That massively. Yeah, but, um, it's stressful, isn't it? It can be, You know, be, that yeah. second night, everyone's tired. The chances are you've not eaten or slept properly, you know, and they're the times that test you as an angler. But yeah, ha um, I think respecting each other makes a massive help and all. Mm. You know, if you don't respect your partner in an angling sense, you know, the chances are you're going to fall out because you'll be thinking to yourself, I could do it better. You know, right, of course. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, it, it plays a massive part in it. But if, but if you respect each other as anglers and you trust each other and you know that Cole's going to get it under their first cast or, you know, you're not worried about his spawning or, mm. what are you doing that for, Cole? You know? Mm. Just wind him up and let him go. He's just <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, I, I would always imagine, right, that in the midst of a match, there's lots of strategy going on, but actually how much of it is instinct and how much are you just doing what you need to do independent of each other or, and how much is it is discuss, discussion the whole time? Again, I think a good match pair, they talk to each other all the yeah, time, Yeah, we, we're talking constantly, yeah. we? what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. you never do something just, un, 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 like Cole would never sort of do something without, coming to me first so, or vice versa. Okay. Yeah. Let, let's rewind a little bit, Rob. How did you approach Carl? Because obviously, you know, you had Cav as your partner for a little while mm. and you thought, Cav's not going to want to do this. I need to find someone else. T tell me about what happened around that. Yeah, so you used to do it with Callum. I did, Callum yeah. Gutteridge, again, phenomenal angler. Mm. Fantastic match angler. But again, life is life. He's got into his motocross quite a bit mm. now, hasn't he? He's got a couple of kids and it's like I say, it's, um, it's hard work committing yourself to fully to, to match angling and um it just slipped into place with covid hap with covid happening and matches obviously coming to a complete halt um yeah the opportunity rose for we just said look you know and the turning point also was you going to mainline baits it was helped. yeah because yeah. you used to be with D dna and you always sort of fish under that same sort of um okay bait banner just makes such. it a bit easier to just make it yeah. easier yeah um mm -hmm. and carl tell us a little bit about your sort of your carp fishing if you like because presumably you don't you're not match fishing the whole time so what kind of stuff do you like to do no before i used to do all big fishing yeah all over the country to be fair um was on where is it um was on chad syndicate for a while had oh, really? a lot of fish out of there did you have black eye i did mega yeah um so that was good then where was there the other one in Oxford, um, Lynch, Lynch. Yeah. Carl was caught every fish you could name on the syndicates. Yeah, yeah. So He's yeah, caught. done well on there. Yeah, um, so, yeah. So I've done a lot of that, but then also done me match fishing as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, then just got into it more and more into the match side more than probably my big fish fishing. And do you share Rob's kind of passion for that particular competition for the the British Carp Champs? Yeah, we both love it so much, so we sort of thrive off each other, sort of thing yeah. for it. And how did you come to be fishing a competition on your own? Um, well, actually, my part, it clashed with another match. Yeah. So he went and done that one. It was like two semi finals. So he went and done that one. So then I went and done the other one and fished on my own in that. Then obviously got through to the final uh -huh. for the Ericsson, wasn't it? And then I think, yeah. was that the year oh, you won it? it? Yeah. I think that might have been the year you won it, wasn't it? Um, oh, the Farlows one. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And we, what was the plan? You would, you would see which one of you got through and then join up yeah, for Yeah, sort the of joined of up for that. No. So yeah, he didn't. Unfortunately, he didn't qualify. Then, obviously, I did for that one for us. Yeah. And then, yeah, we was both together then for the final for that one. Now, obviously, the, the, the convention is that you do it as a pair. Yeah. What advantages does doing uh, a comp as a pair have over and above? Like, why couldn't you just do it as a, as a single angler? What are the things that you should you point towards? You could. Well, you yeah. Know, I'm sure people out there have done it, but the British, it's British pairs at the end of the day. You yeah. Know, so you should be doing it as a, as a joint venture. But, um, you know, Probably just the, the amount of hard work that goes into it. Yeah, you couldn't do Barston on your own. No. It'd just be physically yeah. impossible. That's a good point. Certain venues, yes. We mentioned it earlier on about um, one of our qualifiers, or yeah, it was a uh, Kingsby Pine Pool. That yeah. place, you could. You probably could. Because you want one bite or two bites or something. Yeah, potentially. It always does. Yeah. Like, what, three or four bites yeah. max wins it, unless you get like a bumper session. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but two minds are always greater than one. Okay, we'll, we'll dig a bit deeper into that kind of tactical exchange as we go, but let's. let's um, Let's let's talk through the the process that won you this this trophy. Now, when does it start in a year, Rob? You say you've just signed up for next year, so presumably last year at some stage you were like, "Car and I are going to do the BCAC." What, what was the um, what's the first thing you do? Yes, yeah, so this was actually our second match together because we done the uh, the Topper competition, we did, didn't yeah. we? Got to the final of that, um, 
but yeah, we so it, it's the journey set out would have been probably last October that we entered into Brazenose Two. Um, so whenever we're, we're looking at a, a venue to pick, you know, you, you pick your strengths. Um, our strengths, I guess, really are the big hits. That's what we most enjoy. Yeah. Um, so we entered into B2. Um, big mistake that was. Um, I mean, you know Linear so well as well, Rob. We do, yeah. But traditionally, it just always fishes terrible at that time of the year <laughs> yeah. in that match. It's like you can look at the last three or four results. Every year, it has been a disaster. But in the back of your mind, it's still like it could happen. Mm. And then when you have a hit on B2, it's great fun. You know, yep. you're catching big ones, you're catching plenty of them. It's a nice style of fishing that we enjoy. But yeah, it didn't really go to plan. We got a late draw. Mm. So we'll talk about the match in a minute, but in terms of prep for, for B2, mm. um, what were you, what was in your mind? Like, how are you going to, how are you going to tackle it? Like what, what areas did you want? Um, and also tell me a little bit about how you, how you pick your swims and how you plan for each, each eventuality out the draw bag. Yeah. So a lot of the qualifiers now they're done over sections. So, you know, nine times out of 10, unless you get a very early draw, you know, you're picking who you go against. You okay. Know. So knowing the other anglers is, is key. Mm. Absolutely. Do, 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 do you have a? Um, I'm sure. I'm, I'm. I'm almost certain Dave Gawthorn had some kind of like dossier on anglers when it, when him and Brian Jarrett were super into it. Is it? Is that what we're talking about? Like a, a deep knowledge of what they're going to do and what they yeah. like to do? Yeah, mate. You look at all the finals and semi-finals. It's the same names every year. Mm -hmm. These guys are terminators. They find a way to get through to these big big semi-finals and finals. You know, and it's their name that are on the trophy or on the podium every year. So can you find out in advance who's en entered into each one? And uh, yeah, you can. So you would like to avoid those guys until the final, potentially. Is that... To a degree. Without giving too much away, yeah, right? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. You, 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 look, end of the day, you're going to you have to go yeah. against them at some stage. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. I We tend to just go on the... The qualifier is the best bit because for me anyway, and I think purpose yeah, to be same. fair, it's you're picking that venue because that's your strength or you just yep. want to fish there because you're in tune with it, you like the style of fishing, all that sort of thing. So you just, yeah, you pick it generally on, you know, what it what it holds. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the actual match itself, you know, especially like B2, diversity again, you know, you could be catching them on the bottom. It's March, you know, that, that was in March. So you could be catching them on the bottom, you could be catching them on zigs. So, you know, you've got, four or five different tactics you need to be prepped for. You know, mm -hmm. You've got your zigs, you've got your bottom bait rigs in case it gets really windy and you can't get solid bags out there. You know, you've got your solid bag tactics as well. There's so many things that you need to be... Is it generally range on B2 as well? You say you can't get it out Again, there, is that... It's just... Depends yeah, where you draw, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, and what would what would have been a good draw for you guys? What what were your sort of like, what were you planning for in terms of draws? There was one flyer, wasn't there? Yeah, there was one flyer, but mm. obviously what, it didn't what come out earlier. C-section one? Yeah, Cole's so good with these. So yeah, C-section, the, they just spend a lot of their winter time on B2 down the bottom, bottom end where no one, like dog legs round. In, in a little shallow yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It dog legs round and you can't get to half of them, can you? No, you they just stack up They there. stack up there. Right. And, yeah, so the problem with that is you've got one swim that is the absolute flyer in that section. So the other two swims in that section. Look, is this the end peg? Presumably? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The other two lads in that section, <clears throat> You're not qualifying. It's over before it starts. Right. You know, um, other sections, you know, then you've got the channel section. That's a lot fairer because you're only, if they pull pull through the fish, you know, it's, it's who can nick them the best. Yeah. Um, we sort of, it's a tricky one, wasn't it? It was, to be fair. What we was your favoured tactic going in? What If, if it had all gone to plan, what did you imagine you'd be fishing? Um, see, normally, you know, it's, Linear is so dominated, especially that time of the year, coming out the back of winter with naturals. And that's okay. what's killed it in the matches before. It's, you know, everyone's still putting a lot of worm in. Um, and then you go from the normal day ticket rules to the new BCAC rules where there's no, there's no naturals, no maggots, no worms, no casters, no liquidized, nothing. You know, it's it's pretty much you're on corn, boily pellet or hemp or tigers. So another one them lines. Let's talk about that quickly before we... We get on further. What, why have they done that, and and um, what is it in response to, Rob? I guess. Does it me basically mean you can pay your way to? You know, if it, is it that good that you could, if you buy enough of it, you're going to get a, a better chance? Is that have they tried to even the field? They have, right? I think they have anyway. Yeah, a lot of people are complaining they didn't want to invest. You know, some of the lads are spending a lot of money on on the worm going into the match. You know, like running up into the near thousands. And presumably, you'd have to have been in that camp, Rob, because 
if you wanted to win previously, you have to have that gear. Mate, I've done it. I've done it in the crate right. match. We won the crate match. We spent two thousand pounds on naturals. Amazing. It's just, <laughs> but on the flip side of that, it's you're going for a week where you know, even if you're not in the match, even if you don't, if you've got a bad draw, yep. you're still going to catch a lot of carp and have a fantastic week. This is the crate match. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's the mindset behind that. You know, all the naturals have been banned in that now as well. Haven't so. you? You've got a pretty phenomenal record in on that match, haven't you, Rob? Like you always do pretty well, anyway. I love Crete Lakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, uh, Cole's just got back last week. I did. He had, yeah. yeah he went. How'd you get on? Didn't draw very well. There was two not very great swims that you do not want on the whole complex, mm. <laughs> and we managed to choose that. <laughs> so yeah, it wasn't too great. Have they banned you, Rob? You're not allowed to go no, back now. No, not at all. No, I'd, I'd, <laughs> you know, the, the like I mentioned earlier on, it's like. I've experienced it in its absolute hay period where it was yep. amazing. You know, you go there with the naturals, you don't you didn't even come near a winning, but you still have a fantastic week. Yeah. Um and I've had it so good that now it's gone back to sort of boilie and pellet only. Um it'd be hard to sit there knowing what could potentially happen if you had the <laughs> is no, it, uh, yeah. For normal guys, like I, I you know, I want to put us all in the same bracket here. You've got a young kid, Rob. Is the missus going to sanction two grand on naturals? Mate, it's not a good look now. No. I'd be homeless. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't justify it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's expensive, that game. So it's more democratic now, isn't it? it, it you don't have to, you can't buy your way to a qualifying yeah. victory. And I'm, I'm no means saying the lads that have done well, off the, you've still got to be a good angler. You could mm. give someone that hasn't got a clue what they're doing, you know, a thousand pounds worth of naturals, and they're still only going to catch a few fish. But you yep. give someone with so much talent and know how to, and that's a lot of it is they know how to use mm -hmm. the naturals correctly, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to smash it. And how quickly did you learn that, Rob? How, how quick, and, and where did you get that, you know, where did you draw those, uh, that information from? Was mm -hmm. it something you learn yourself or no, you talking to people? No, mate. It's, you know, going from, and it all stemmed from the matches, to be fair, when did Wayne they? and Ryan absolutely destroyed places because they knew how to use it, mm -hmm. you know, they know how to apply it. And that is the biggest edge of naturals is that you can't just turn up with 50 key worm put it out there and expect a haul these guys have mastered like down to an absolute fine art have you watched them no i haven't you've been next I to have. them haven't you i fished and got them yeah carved up didn't you okay absolutely it's a, carved it's an up. eye opener yeah i mean it's no it, it, right so you know let's get it out of the way it's no wonder people thought there was some dodgy stuff going on hormone wise etc etc et it's yeah. no it it feels to me like Yes, the, these matches are on the rise again, but a lot of it has been overshadowed by this in the last eighteen months. Let's say such a shame. It's such a shame. It's um, it's horrible in a way to see these guys, you know, doing so well and then getting slandered off the back of it. There literally is no hormone. It is complete waffle. You know, it's mm. it's just it's good angling. You know, you're talking about the best of the best. That you give the best of the best, the best bait out there, which is naturals. Let's mm -hmm. face it, you're never mm -hmm. going to compete. A, a boilie, a corner, hemp is never going to compete with a natural hook bait or a natural free offering. And you give these guys that have got so much talent and know how to use it, what do you expect? You know, why is Tiger Woods the top boy in golf? Why is Ronaldo previously? Mm -hmm. Because they're just, they're just better. They know how to apply it. They know how to use it. And Do you think that people's um, desires to keep stuff like the naturals, particularly the worm under wraps, has led to this kind of speculation around I guess hormones. so, yeah, because everyone mm. wants that edge. Mm. Because it's worth money, right, ultimately? You're dealing with, you know, 20 grand every year, you know, and but you, the worm is not as powerful as it used to be, is it? No. It's so saturated now. You walk around places where it's it's mainly mainly used, like Linear, for instance, yeah. they, they use a lot of worm on their steel. It's nowhere near as powerful as it used to be. It's no wonder in that case that people wanted to keep it under wraps, is it? Because... Is What's it, happened is it's lessened this effectiveness, hasn't it? Um, so back to B2. Um, so you have got no naturals. Uh, what is in your mix? What, what are we taking? Corn. That time of year, yes, isn't it? it? Was, yeah. Just yeah, digestible, visual, like... Straight through them. Yeah. You know, corn is a very, very powerful bait on its own. We had a bit of hemp in the mix as well, Did didn't you? we? Um, D didn't you talk about... Are you on the phone all the time oh, leading up to these things? Yeah. Like, yeah. What yeah. do we take? Yeah. Discussing uh, everything, don't we? Yeah. Seeing what we're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, the chances are you could be sitting there with a bit of flip flop behind your rods, and hopefully you're going to get on the zigs. <laughs> I you mean, know? do you generally have the same sort of ideas? You you you're thinking on the same lines yeah. a lot of the time, rather than it being, I want to do this. No, I want to do that. Yeah, we're on the same. But I think that's yeah. why it works so well. We're yeah. on the same page. But uh, but you know, potentially just throwing it in there. If you're on the same page, sometimes you're not going to see something that might be a little bit out of the box or, or whatever. 
I'd like to think they're both very adaptive. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and that, and that is the key to match fishing. You know, you can go and, it's funny, you can go and practice on venues and think you know what the crack is. And then you go two weeks later or a week later, the weather conditions are completely different. Uh -huh. It's changed. It, it, it changes. So seeing it on the day, you know, and, and looking at it on the day and then changing your tactics for that day. Yeah. Is that's what so did you drop onto B2 presumably without a practice because you know that you both know the water pretty well? Yeah, and at that time of the year, it's it was clear that you know if you if you was going to write out four four match winning areas, you know, I think we pretty much nailed it, didn't we? To be yeah. fair, mm -hmm. and it just that time of the year, it's difficult. They just they're still showed up. Yeah, they're not everywhere. Off, it? Yeah, well. It was a cast off, and we almost called it, didn't we? Yeah. We didn't go. We could have gone <laughs> into the the best peg in that section, yeah. which would have been long chuck on B2. Yeah. They weren't there. There was there wasn't hardly a fish in the bowl. They were all at the other end and in the channel a little sort bit. of point upwards, point left, yeah, yeah. point yeah. left. And um, I just didn't want to go for a cast off. Mm -hmm. You know, did you? It was just <laughs> done all this prep. You know, we've entered in it, and we're gonna sit there in forty eight hours time after casting to a bucket to go through to a semi. So we sort of went for it. We went up against the point. Um, it's what it is. You know, we got halfway through the match and entered into another one. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> is it is it not the done thing to just go home? No, you see not. it out. No, no, you yeah. always sit it out. Even though you even though you'd already re-entered, you knew it's just right. Yeah, and I've seen matches change quick. Hmm. You know, last morning they've turned, and especially like a place like B two. How many fish you got in it? Eighteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Imagine you get three hundred of them turn up on you. <laughs> Some of them are big now, aren't they? As well in B two. Doesn't take long. No, you know it's a tight match. To be fair, and again, you're only ever against two other anglers because you're in a section so mate you boy down the bottom end that's had 50 fish I well mean, that, done but that, we haven't got to worry about him that is more fair now isn't it uh, that's a fairer way of doing things because you're always you're always in the hunt if it's a section thing absolutely mm. sections help so where did you book but I, I, let's just finish this up you didn't catch anything no, no. total just, blank the whole blow uh, we, yeah. we, we was up against the point and opposite point done really well didn't they yeah um, yeah we was at the match in the first hour I mean um, if you're up against the point's like the dolly hole isn't it as well it's uh it, it can be good... we, we, we was, was in a swim where you know I've done some big hits and yourself yeah. as well haven't you on that yeah. causeway section to B1 if they turn up there and that was our um, thinking you know yes we're against the point yes we've got it hard work we're going to get it hard work mm -hmm. wherever we go because we're coming out like 11th in the draw wherever yep. it was 10th um you know, shit or bust. <laughs> what about mentality? When when the draw, you know, who, by the way, who does the draw? Which one of you sticks a hand in the bag? Rob's, Rob's a little bit luckier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit luckier. So you've done the draw. Um, it hasn't gone exactly how you'd want. How do you keep your head in the game? Like what, what, is the men what kind of mentality, what kind of things are you saying to each other to keep keep you, you know, motivated? They're fish. They've got they've got fins. Yeah. They can easily and but when you, you both know that you're up against yeah, it though. You mate, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be coming out tenth at B two in March. Right, it's not ideal, you know. But again, we was just clutching on to if they turn up, then we're we ready. could have it off, and yeah. then and then we're competing. But and in terms of like introducing bait, for instance, when you're clearly not on fish, mm. what what do you do about that? Because there are roach and stuff in in. In B two, right? Big ones. Yeah. Where yeah. Did we start? Yeah. We actually, well, we started off with putting bait out, mm. but then sort of halfway through, we thought this is not yeah, working. Not, you felt no it wasn't fish. getting eaten yeah, at all. No, yeah. so there was no fish there at all. So we just went beyond our spot a bit and just fished single solids and zigs. And at that point, mm -hmm. just to see if we can pick some off on it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is that always the? It always feels like the lads who go longest can nick a bite in, in these situations. Mm. Um, but obviously, you, you know, ultimately you could probably, Rob, I imagine, cast over half, you know, halfway towards the guys on the far bank. Yeah, um, we could have cast 500 yards, we still wouldn't have been on them. No. Yeah, we're that far away. <laughs> yeah, <they were laughs> so far away. So straight away, you are back on the website and you're booking Kingsbury. Yeah. Venue I didn't know nothing about. But I was going to say, it's in the Midlands, right? I mean, Kingsbury is in, yeah, near Solihull, I think. Um, I didn't know what I was yeah. getting into. It was a match venue. It was a big. I didn't. It was like it's a cool place, Kingsbury Water Park. Mm. Cole um, sold it well. Yeah, it was have right. you you'd been before? I've been there a few yeah. times. Yeah, so I sort of know what I was doing on there. So talk yeah. to talk to us, Carl, to explain what the, what the venue is and, and what and what kind of fishing it demands. It was well, it's, it's a weird sort of weird shape. It goes into three different sort of bays. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's sort of there is a better area called like the Reed Swim that yep. is the out and out normally a flyer, and then there's a, a, the other swim. I can't, I don't know what the name is. It's not sort of peg normally peg six or seven, and it sort of intercepts in all the different ways they come through. Yeah, um, and we actually manage. We come out in in that draw. We come out fifth or sixth to actually get our first choice. 
Amazing. Yeah. So where's the info coming from? Is this because you've been before? Yeah, just because I've been there before and I've done okay over the... And these were matches? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rob, what were your first impressions? Because obviously Carl's filled you in on it, but you've never been there. So talk to us about what you saw when you got there. Yeah. So I've been, I've, I've mentioned earlier, I've been doing match fishing a long time. So I know a lot of lads in the match scene, very yep. good friends. So I'm on the phone. I'm ringing people up. And uh, the first port of call is someone I've done a lot of match fishing with. One the creek match with is Steve Blow. Mm -hmm. Been around for years, phenomenal angler, but he's very, he's very good at reading lakes, isn't yeah. he? He's very in tune with, and he's got a good memory as well. You know, really good memory. And I just, we, I tapped him up. We both tapped him up yeah. quite a bit, didn't we? And said to him like that. First off, where are yeah. the swims that generally yeah. win it? Yeah. You know, and then how, what's the best approach? You know, and, you, and then we come it's back to each other, don't we? And we come up with, but yeah, it's a different lake to what I expected. Um, very shallow, mm -hmm. very, very clear. Very, very silkweedy. Um, you could see why the flyers were the flyers. Yeah. You know, because th the amount of fish traffic they could potentially have. Um, so being stuck in a bay, it's not really ideal. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see some of the swims, the fish would just, you know, if they did leave that bay, they'd swim straight past you to get to another bay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, swim choice was another one that was going to yeah. be key, wasn't it? But I say a little bit of luck that time. And we got, I think we came out fifth, didn't we? I think it was fifth. And yeah. um, got blowy's first choice swim right where mick ledger dan moorcroft yeah they that was a good pair that's a reed well. swim yeah, yeah. you could see why if they got in there mm -hmm. why you could nick and it was all about nicking bites because there was no 20 fish hits you know it was no traditionally three or four fish that win it you'll get another four or five pairs on ones and twos and there's always going to be yeah. five or six pairs so, that struggle so there's two guys who've you know you you said fairly early on today that you you like the big hit fishing this is not big hit fishing this is nicking a bite um, which you're both adept at i'm sure but how much of a change of sort of mindset and tactic does that actually involve mm. so you're fishing it very different to like you right. would be too yeah you know it's um it's operation nick a bite you know you're setting little traps um they came in so close didn't they like it's it's incredible. Rod incredible. And how quickly did you notice that? And was that where you were planning to fish anyway? Or No, like I say, I was almost in cold hands. I was just like, yeah. right, you've fished here before. What's the crack? Spoke to a couple of other mates as well, Brian and that, that had done well. Um, but yeah, we we didn't win it. We won that one, but we didn't win it how we thought we were going to win it, did mm. we? Like against the reeds, um, that there was just so much silkweed around that weed, but the <laughs> reeds. Yeah. You know, and again, you just had to quickly. But there was a couple of lads walking around also, weren't there? Yeah. Remember them lads? Yeah, there was a couple of locals that couldn't help but walk around and start giving pairs advice and stuff. Yeah. And they're Andy. Yes. You know, and what they were saying was making sense. You know, like, you know, you need to just set traps. You know, you're only after three bites. Mm. Which must be really difficult to get your head around when you're wanting to be active. Mm. You know, like you guys want to do something to change the flow of the match all the time, but actually you, they're telling you, no, put that in, leave it in. Yeah, set your traps and wait for your morning bite time. Um, and which, which is kind of like nervy, right, surely? If it doesn't happen, you're yeah. screwed. It's, it's hard, but it, but there was no one running away with it as you'd expected. So it is it is a bit more of a chilled atmosphere. It's not like you're sitting there going, I'm eight fish behind. Yeah. I'm, I'm not too sure what I'm up to here. Yeah. It was, a, yeah, it played out to how it normally fishes. Now, the lads walking around is, is something I do want to talk about a bit because I think what people perhaps don't understand is how tied you are to a swim in these matches. Mm. Talk to us about about that and, and how that affects the way you can fish because we'd all be around the far side looking in, over the reeds and mm. trickling a bit in and then casting over, but you're stuck in the swim, aren't you? Yeah, you are. And it's, it's um, you know, you've only got, what's it, three metres each side? I think so, something like that, yeah. yeah. Three metres each side of your peg marker and there's no baiting outside of that. Um, you can go and look, can't you? Yeah, you can, you can go, go and have and a look, look and climb a tree. But yeah, everything mm. fishing wise, rods. You can't, you can't go and bait up. No, elsewhere. and if you're on a venue that allows bait boats, you know, and they're carving mm. them up under canopies, yeah. and you've got to take all these things into consideration. Um, yeah. Just, so blow by blow, then, guys. Um, you turn up at Kingsbury. You've got your fifth choice, which actually, oh, sorry, you've got the, you've got, you come out mm. fifth. You've got your perhaps your first choice. Um, talk me through exactly what you did and how it all unfolded that first day and into the first night. Mm. Well, we well we got told some spots to start off with against a reed and where they sort of come free back and forth. So we started off there. Nothing really happened. We were seeing all the fish coming down the margins constantly going underneath our rod tips. And then you you changed and said, well, I'm going to just chuck a bag down my right margin. I think did you have one off there first? I did in the morning. Yeah, it was that. It was that little right. I remember leading around, 
and it, again, it was just silk weedy really everywhere. You know, everything came back. There was hardly mm. any. And the lads were saying that were coming around, it's like, no, oh, no, there's hard areas out there. So you know, I'm trying to think now, right, time to set a trap. Yeah. You know, if we can nick one every eight hours, that's four bites. We'll be all right. There's fish coming through. We've got, a, we were buzzing, weren't we? Because yeah. we're seeing fish. You know, just, we've come from B2 where it's like, we've not seen a fish yeah. within a thousand yards of us to them literally swimming under our rod tips. <laughs> like literally yeah. under like packs yeah. of four and five. Um, so yeah, it was just operation set traps on it. And just, um, I think I actually raked off a little spot, didn't you I? You did as well. down there, yeah. Yeah, I raked off a little spot. Is this because you just couldn't find these hard drops that you mm. were, yeah. yeah. And because they were just coming under the rod tips yeah. on it as well. Mm. I had some reeds to the right, didn't you, I? Yeah. Do you think, Rob, that those fish on encountering a raked spot were like, oh, something's, you know, something's fed here. Is that the kind of vibe you were looking for? Raking, raking spots is... Yeah, it's deadly. Mm. Deadly. Stirring everything up, it's getting just, in that. Presumes like shrimp and stuff yeah. in the silkweed, yeah. It's powerful. Yeah, it really. And is. you weren't presented on the silkweed, otherwise, you know, you, would you have gone to a bag on top if you'd had to? Absolutely. Yeah. They, they were saying chods as well, wouldn't yeah. they? And it's just, um, which must be a million miles from what you're you're used to on these matches. I, I grew up in that style of fishing, you know, fishing at Croxy and stuff, and yeah. fishing on top of the silkweed. Yeah, we've done it. You have too, yeah, isn't it? You know, we, we, we can fish like that, mm. but um, but we know how powerful things like solid bags are yeah you know they they will get more bites than chods and hinges it just will it's facts um so you know you're always going to go to your go-to there's no good putting out something that you've not fished for even though you're more than capable of fishing it and you're more than happy you still want to put your best rig forward yeah you know and and for me both of us really is it solid bags play yep. a massive part in our angling mm -hmm. so we were still presented on the silkweed but from experiences we know how powerful raking off little areas are okay so what do you think, in your mind's eye, Rob, and maybe you were able to actually see this, I don't know, what were you achieving with that little, with the rake? How, how much were you looking to clear and, and, uh, and what actually happened with that? Yeah, so it was literally the size of, I guess, this table. You know, time you've quite, had, yeah, yeah, yeah just time you've had 20, 30 cars. Yep. They're all not landing in the same size, are they? And mm -hmm. you're, you're raking little bits off and you're just making a nice little area. And it's... it's Down it's, to the gravel or was it silt underneath the silt? It's silt, yeah, it was silt, yeah. Okay. Um, you're just making a nice enough... I think it's just that change... They're just, they just, they think they're missing out. Yeah. They think their powers have just come in, ripped it up, and now it's like, well, that's, that's which, our chance. Which is incredible, something. really, because nothing's more instant than convincing a fish that something's just fed there, and yet probably no one thinks to rake in a match. It seems like a really extreme thing to do in a, where you're just trying to nick a bite, but actually, how quickly did you get did you get that bite then, Rob? Again, we, we had to wait till the morning, didn't we? It was, yeah. Yeah, we waited till the morning and um, nicked our first one off of it, which is put us straight up there didn't they I think no didn't they catch a couple in the reeds they yes did, they, they did, did. Yeah, yeah they, they did, caught yeah. a couple but yeah we was we was on the board hmm. but you <clears throat> throughout the whole night you're relaxed enough though right you, or, or what What's you're never relaxed until you're about five and a pound in front <laughs> 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 Do you know there's nothing worse than being in first place in the beginning of a match no yeah and it's, it's, it's horrible what, leading is, is hard oh, stressful because right. you know you've got a chance you mm -hmm. know and then then you start worrying about what's happening. How, how, how big was it? You know, because does it does it affect the way that you fish when you're chasing as opposed to leading? You can't let it. That's right. what it you can can't. do to some people, though, can it? Massively, you right? Know, they start going on the back foot a little bit. Where you, you just, fish less aggressively when you're yeah um, leading. Yeah, you don't want to spoke them. Right, you know, well, we've caught three. You know, if we can just nick one more, you've just got to keep with that mindset. It's like we need, we need another three. Mm. You know, I actually remember. And it, it, will it will never leave my brain. I remember us in Broadlands in the final um, and we was in second or third at this stage. And I said to Cole, oh, mate, we're going to, I reckon we're going to frame from here. Mm -hmm. I want to win it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he and said. Mate, yeah. I swear. And I will never, ever, ever forget that. Yeah. And that's the mentality that separates okay. people. So what was the fish you caught, Rob, um, the next morning? They were nice fish out there. They're lovely oh, carp in Kingsbury, aren't they? So Dark nice. commons. Mm. That's yeah. what we had then, yeah. lovely dark commons. Yeah. It was, yeah. um, I can't remember the first one. They're can't 20s, remember. aren't they, they generally? Are 20s. Though, yeah. yeah, we yeah. had a good stamp of fish. There were mm. lice, just remember holding it up for the thing and thinking, this is actually hard. Come back and fish here. It's yeah, nice. yeah, no, definitely. It's a proper little pit. It's nothing mm. like what, I mean, it's been on the the BCAC roster for a long time, hasn't it? It's, yeah. it's well established. Um, but really nothing like probably anywhere else that you're going to encounter no, on that Because you scene. wouldn't class it as a match venue. No. It's not a match venue. It's more like a syndicate wall, yeah, isn't no, it? Yeah, I guess yeah. it's the locals that generally enter in it because they're walking their dogs around it, mm. walking their missus around it. You know, you're in tune with it. Where, Yeah. So you feel like you're uh, a quarter of the way to, 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 to qualifying at that point? 
Yeah. Uh, you felt like it, this is something. To, does that mean you carry on with what you were doing, Rob, or do you look to try and push other rods no, into we action? Changed, and we changed. We changed. Right. We changed, and, and that was the key point, wasn't it? Yeah, we changed from the um, the solids over to zigs, didn't we? Yeah. Very short zigs. What? So why? Just because the so amount of fish yeah. were there were typical spring, you know, as they were filtering through, they were doing it very very slowly. They've just woken up. Yeah. You know, we've had quite a harsh winter. We're talking there. April here or something. It would have been, wouldn't it? A bit it? later, I think. Was it a bit later? Yeah, maybe a bit later. Yeah. End of April, May. May. Yeah. Okay. Start May, I think. Yeah, but it was a fairly cold one last week, last winter, wasn't it? It mm. took a little while for mm. it to get going, and they were just waking up. Yeah. And they were, as they were coming down, you could see them, but they weren't just swimming in Vs. They'd swim along, and there'd be a little bit of depression on the surface as it just, as yep. the tails just yep. slow. And they were just very close. And even though it's shallow, we didn't feel like they were dropping down enough to warrant our baits in the bottom. So. But this is where. You you know the big decisions are made you've caught and yet you're going to scrap that mm. um what was that conversation like was it was this like a, a mutual thing no yeah it was we um sort of stuck two rods on it then we thought yeah we chucked two zigs so you out. dipped your toe rather than going all yeah, out. yeah. all like okay. instead of that so we kept the one down the margin on the solid yeah <clears throat> and then two rods out on zigs and mm. to be fair it went really quick didn't it mm. really quick what we're talking um depth wise because it's a shallow lake isn't 18 it? inches i yeah. think it was how short was that <clears throat> in what kind of depth of water guys four was it three that was it three yeah it, it just changed a little the yeah. further you go out you got the that the, got, yeah, yeah the shallower it got didn't it um so just under half depth potentially i'd say top thirds probably okay. in certain yeah. areas yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but you're more you was above that silkweed mm -hmm. you know and there's so much natural food in that silkweed that a little black bit of zig it's so black you went with black what just black Black foam was, wasn't it? Yeah, and then black and yellow as well. I think you did have a yeah. black and yellow out there. Yeah. Okay, You're the old B type thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, and did they did that one go noticeably differently to the black? Or? It did. To be fair, I had two bites quite quick, didn't I? It did. It did. Yeah. Does that mean in match fishing is that always a, a wholesale change? Then you've had the two. Does that mean everything's on these zigs now? We did then. Did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to open your eyes to them sort of things. Little mm. subtle changes make a big difference. Yeah. Um. So the two that you had. Um, where do they put you? It put us in first end by it, No, we didn't. So the th I remember it very clearly. Remember the one I lost in the morning? Oh, no, yeah, it was God, right. God, mate. What? Horrific. <laughs> you don't so, want to lose any <clears throat> fish in a match, do you? So go no. tell us about so it. So going into the second night, we had one. Uh, Ledger and Moorcroft, they was on yeah. like two, weren't two, they? Yeah. And there was another pair on one. I believe we was in fourth going into the second night. You only need one fish and you're in first. I get a bite on the zig. The zig, remember the bite? Yeah. So it was so aggressive. I literally, we're sitting there, mist is coming up in the yeah. morning, like spring, and my rod tip just slammed round like hard, and we were just both like, "Been done. It's done me. Like it's absolutely done me." And I was just like, but as I walked to the rod, I could see my line still tweaking. Twitching. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> it's it's, 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 maybe they're just filtering through again. Still, just picked it up. And there it was. It moved down to the right. It come towards yep. me and right, and just sat in the silkweed. Yeah. Got and remember, it's the last morning. There's four hours to go. Um, we need. This is this is it. Get this in. We've qualified. There's no way another three pairs are going to catch a single fish each and do us. Mate, how close was it to the net? <laughs> <laughs> Meter trophy. And away. it was a good one. It was an upper really? twenty common. Them lovely, <laughs> wasn't it? lovely, lovely fish. <clears throat> And it just happened in slow motion. Just the hook was <laughs> Mate, they just watched this zig just fly past my head. And you just stand there like that. <laughs> this horrible feeling of just like, that's it. Mm. <laughs> that was how our chance. How quickly can you turn that into, no, we go again? It, I'll be honest with you. It, I, I, honestly, the way it was fishing, yeah. that was the chance. Right. My head's... I was going to say, what do you do at that point? There's, there is no, Cry. there is no go again, is there? That you just, that's done, isn't it? No, it just, it, it. <laughs> It pains you because it was bite time. Yeah. You know, nothing's been out past nine o'clock at this time. No. But it's fish really poor <laughs> past that bite time. That was the one. Carl, what, did, what did you say to him at that point? Like, because you'd have you'd have seen it from obviously. I know. <laughs> like, would you? How do you didn't encourage him? Or, or I what? didn't want to say anything. I was like, oh no. <laughs> we both got the same thing going for our head. That's it. That's no it's well. Just, do you not say anything to each other? Is it just silence? It's just. It's just it was fit. for about five minutes and then we sort of got on with, got on with it. Yeah. Just, it's yeah. a long five minutes, that, isn't it? Thankfully, they showed up, didn't they? They did, yeah. They showed up. Mm. and um, So this was the the vanguard of what, what was coming, the shoal that was coming in, potentially. 100%. Yeah, right. got, yeah come in more numbers, yeah. wasn't it, then? Yeah, they, the were, they went from coming down, and like I said, just 
being lethargic on the surface, yep. just seeing the little tail patterns and the little ripples, wasn't it, to mm. actually a couple of showing. They've yeah. got a bit more active. And um, yeah, you cast the singles, they got a show. I remember I, I saw it, it was on your side. I said, God, one has just poked his head up up there. That black and yellow went out there, didn't it? It was out there. Two minutes. God bang. Dear. Right. Second chance. And you, you come back that yeah, yeah, at this <laughs> at this point, you but you've got to be absolutely buzzing, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, because you've gone from the depths of despair to know this is still on. Yep. Yeah. I remember coming behind he's playing this fish. I remember coming behind him shaking him, going, Come on, we're <laughs> yeah. this is the one we're gonna get through and we're gonna get a second chance. And uh yeah, you got that one in, and then you got another one, didn't another you? Another one straight after. So that's three and that, and hang on, that's going to put you... Oh, we was first with the one he just landed. Yes. Yeah. So and the then, second fish, you're like, you at that point, are you fairly sure that that's it? We're, Pretty we're, much, we're yeah. Done. Yeah. Anything now is, 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 yeah, there's no, it, the way it's fishing, you know, it's just, we, we, we're through. And then it was a bonus one after that. So th for the first time, you can relax yeah. in the match. As soon as that fish is in the net, it's fine. We're, yeah. we're through. Because yeah. the way it's fishing. That's a proper emotional roller coaster, that is, no, isn't it? <laughs> Just yeah, keep your head in, the, in these matches. It's I lost mine. I'm not gonna lie. It's, yeah, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's painful, mate. It's I kind painful. of expected you to say no, no, we're machines. Like you know, we just got it back out there, and that was it. But if it's, it's an just... out and out runs, well, and you've got a lot in front of you, you know, it's a different mindset. But yeah, just waking up in the morning, getting that opportunity, losing it two foot from the net. So I really wanted to go to the semi as well. Mm. You know, B one's good fun. You know, I mean, I was just yeah, just felt like we've missed. It's out. almost a home draw for you boys, isn't it? That you've. Uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it's If Kingsbury's on a way draw, you've got a home draw for the semi, right? Yeah. yeah. We're a bit more in tune now. I'm a bit more at my comfort zone. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, um, yeah, again, it's sections again. Yep. You know, so where Kingsbury was an out and out, top three. Three. Top three. You're only ever against back to back two again. So you've only got to beat the lad next year and the lad the opposite year. Okay. Yeah. And um, what time of year are we talking? How, how much further into hot. the year were you at this point? It was hot. Oh, it was a hot summer this yeah. time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah, it was... Um, I think it was like 30 degrees when it was. Well, I've screwed it, right? It's presumably that's bad. Well, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, B1, they love a floater. Okay. They absolutely love a floater. Another tactic that just match fishing and float fishing is not synonymous, is it? So we've gone from B, B2 where it's been like fishing at range like yep. 27 28 wraps three in a spot you know there's a two bodies at two yeah. in a spot nice and tight to kingsbury pie and where you're like raking off little spots putting solids on it then going to the then going to the um the zigs and now we're at b1 it's roasting hot and the only way really of winning that match was on the surface that week wasn't yeah it? zigs and surface yeah <laughs> does that mean you're completely at the mercy of where those fish are patrolling That's so one. what did it Talk to me about the lead up to that match. Mm. What discussions were you having on the phone? Did you practice? Um, again, possibly not because it, you know it so well, but what what were the prep? What was the prep leading into that? Mm. Yeah, we didn't practice at all, did we? We didn't, didn't really have much no. time. No, we didn't. And you said, you, you, Carl has ruined that place in the float. You've had some big hits. Yeah, I've not done a lot. Hits. I've mm. done a bit when I'm fishing it, but I've not gone over there to surface fish where you have, haven't you? Yeah, so I've done loads on there. Yeah, he was like getting the, the, the pellets were the key. You know, you're not small, just, big, small. small. Yeah, you're not just putting out dog biscuits. You know, you mm. the feeding of the pellet was the key, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You can if you put the four mils in, they get too occupied. Then you're just struggling. So normally the six mils with a few leavens is sort of the way to go on that. Mm -hmm. And like I'm surprised that that this was this was a thing in in the match scene. Does that mean that? Well, it kind of means that either that everybody knows about it and they're all going to be prepping the floater options or or you guys were kind of going to be on on your own doing it. Yeah, but it, You've only got to look at the weather. You know you're up against. It's mm -hmm. 15, 16 foot out there. You know, it's, it's 30 degrees by 9 a.m. Yeah. Yep. You know, you've got... So, so all the lads had floaters? Everyone. If, if you didn't, did. you haven't looked at the weather. Yeah. You, yeah. You're in a semi-final. So who, you know... This is, this is what I want to get to, right? Talk yeah. to me about how serious it is at this point. What kind of people are we talking about? What kind of levels of prep you've seen from other people, Rob? Yeah. They're terminators, mate. You know, right. they they've got they've got for a qualifier, they've you know, and they're they're here. And they're, mm -hmm. anyone that's in that semi generally will get through. They've all got a very, very good chance. And you've got the best of the best now that are getting a smaller tip a smaller knit community, you know, around the lake. It's yeah. um we had some good anglers in ours, didn't we? The very second qualifier anglers, yeah. was really, really struck a hard one, wasn't it? Yeah. Um but yeah, we had a we had a tough one. Um some good anglers you didn't want to go against. We got lucky. In terms of the kind of um, the camaraderie at these things, how standoffish are people like before and, you know, like 
do you tend to stay in your little groups and try to give as little away as possible or, or is it very open like you know now you're there it's like yeah, we're all friends aren't yeah, we to be it's, fair. yeah it's yeah. everyone's it's a, it's nervous at the start because the draw is so so important especially like going yeah. into b1 where i got there the night before and it was so apparent where they were they were stacked and i mean like i got up at three in the morning because that's when they were going to show that like hour into yep. light and an hour after dark if you didn't see them then you know you, you're never going to find them and um yeah i got up and stacked in front of disabled it was disgusting so down the first end yeah, yeah disabled yeah that slight just off the shallows and they were that i remember cold turning up at eight and i was like mate like i remember saying to him if i could pay five hundred quid I'd put it in there now just so we can come out first and get in just for a good bit of fishing, <laughs> mm. you know, because mm. it was just like... But you were there at 3 a.m., Rob. Let's just... I want to dwell on that a little bit because how many lads were there when you were there? Who were... There was a few. Was there? Yeah, there was a few lads there camping, uh, camping the night out, you know. It was because nice they night. wanted to listen or because they just happened to be in... You know, they wanted to be there ready for the morning. Yeah. Linear's gates open at 7, half yeah. 7, something like that. You know, if you, <laughs> you've missed it. What time was the draw? Uh, nine. Right. But at half seven, you've missed them shows. Right. So, so one of us had to be there. To by the by, the time the semi-final rolls around, are most of the lads going to be there the night before? Or You'd like to right. think so, yeah. They're not turning yeah. up at eight? No. There's right. at least one of you there. Yeah. You know, and there was, it was apparent there was a good 10 or 15 lads there yeah. you know, that night before. And um, yeah, so you know, you're not going to get there just to get up at eight in the morning and go, oh, let's go and do a draw. You're mm. there to mm. do a part of the job, you know, which is get up a ridiculous early in, uh, in the morning, to see where they are to make your draw and life a little bit easier right i want to i want to hear a little bit about the um you know that that period leading up to the, any draw there must be a bit of cloak and dagger like no one's really going to want to give anything away are they at that point surely no nah, that that the walks around the lake are quite <laughs> funny actually because you're sort of like you're going past people and it's just like, you're right, yeah. <laughs> unless unless you know them really well like they're good pals here then then yeah you're right everyone's just got their little bits of paper they're writing their, their things in and it is a little bit and you're stopping to swim and someone will come in it's like, how's it looking yeah. <laughs> it's one of them jobs so, somebody like billy and jamie who you've been around for a long time presumably yeah would there be a bit more openness because ultimately they know that you're going to do the job if you get in the swim equally if they get in the swim you know they're going to do the job yeah we're not in any way mugging each other off and putting them in, putting us in uh, saying there's fish there when there's yeah. not and all that sort of thing but yeah you know you, you're not going to win it by giving away too much so it's even though we're good pals and mate, if i weren't in the match mm -hmm. i'd have quite happily gone to bill and oh, mate bill i was here two weeks ago yeah. right, or uh, two days ago they're stacked in so and so take you know what i mean have, mm -hmm. have a look down there but yeah in a matching environment you know mm -hmm. you're not going around telling everyone what you've seen and what you're doing so it's almost like you walk up to someone they're chatting they get to within a certain distance you, you everything stops you're like all right and then they start again once <laughs> yeah, you're out exactly. of earshot yeah exactly yeah. that you know you, you're there to do a job and um yeah, you're not you're not giving too much away, you know. So talk to me through about the draw. Finally, you know, a good draw. It's um, funny because one of the marshals, uh, Dave Cox, he's he's a, he's a character, isn't he, Dave? Yeah. I, I love Dave. I've got a lot of time for him, and uh, there's always a bit of banter between us. And um, he was the lad that was picking the balls out, and it was we were stood quite far back, weren't we? Everyone's sort of like in a C shape, and they're at the front, and um, he's picked this book. He's picked so it's names, names at the hat first of all. Whoever comes out first. What swim do you want? Oh, it's watercraft draw. Watercraft yeah. draw. Ah, yeah, okay. watercraft draw. Yeah. Fin the final was the only one that's out the bag. Okay. Okay, so it's a watercraft draw. And uh, Dave's put his hand, got one of the little old canister, film canisters, mm -hmm. and your name's in that. He's popped the lid, and you, you just, there was a smirk on his face, you know, as in like, ah, have they come out yeah. first? It was one of them type of things, wasn't it? <laughs> I looked at Carl, I was like, it's us. That's us. And he yeah. was just like, Carl Palmer, Rob Burgess. I was like, yeah, we're actually going to get in the disabled, and it took a little while. And I'm actually, I remember walking, and Carl was like, "Go on and go and tell him where you want to go, and then you go and put the next canister out." And uh, I remember walking up there. I wanted it so much that I was triple checking that it was the <laughs> right number because, like, what was it, A two or A three or A two? And I kept looking. Even when I got to, there, I was like, A two, it's disabled. Isn't it? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we want disabled. Yeah. <laughs> and and when you've pulled this, that that you've chosen that. It, are there sort of knowing looks from around the, the lads? Like, did other people seem to know that that was... Anyone that got up at that three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock period, you must have seen them. Mm. It was like SeaWorld out there, you know, they're five at a time. And there's all sorts coming out the water. Yeah. Um, it, it was, i tell you what, after, if you'd have come out second, it got tricky because there were so many fish in that section and, and the other sections were, to me, it was like, 
wasn't unfair, but it was like, if you couldn't win it from that situation, yep. you know, you're not going to get a better chance. Okay. It was like the clear cut, absolute, you're on them. Yep. Do not spook them, make the most out of it, and you'll sail through. And after that, it was a tricky draw, wasn't it? It was like, oh, yes. again, you're back to, who am I going to go against? Yep. You know, if he goes in there, do I really need to be going against him? Because... And that comes into it. So you'd you'd yeah. have a couple of choices. Had you fallen further down the draw, you'd have looked at who'd gone where beforehand. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And how that's quite a complicated um, set of uh, of criteria to hold in your head while you're trying to make a, a decision. Mm. Do you tend to write it down? Or, or no, we don't ever do we. Do you have a quick discussion then? Oh, they've gone there, so, so we're going to yeah, go. When the draw bags, when when it's um, when it's ongoing, we had the bit of paper in our in our in our hands with the sections drawn out. And then you write people's names where they've yep. gone in the section. So when it is our time, you've then got 30 seconds to go, Billy and Jamie gone in there. Kevin Bart gone mm. in there. We, we're making it double Let's go hard. to a different section. Let's go yeah. for a different section. Okay. You know, and sometimes you come out late, you come out early, they come out late and they're forced into your section and you're just like, there we go. Mm. You don't need this. I mean, you hope that you're, by virtue of having come out early, you're in a, you've got, you're on more fish or yeah. whatever to start with. Yeah. Um, Carl, how much pressure does uh, coming out number one come with? Um, a little bit of pressure. He thrives off it, he loves I, it. I, I do, <laughs> yeah, I do, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I do like it. Um, I just go out there and just fish, so it's just one of them. Mm -hmm. It's just a bonus to come out first uh -huh. to sort of have your top pick. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. You fish with more vigor, don't you? Yeah. You know, you know you're, you've done, if you're gonna walk around a lake and start fishing, yeah. and, you, and you're no one there, you're gonna fish, you, mm -hmm. Rather than you get to your syndicate, the whole lake's busy and you're stuck in a little corner like that. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's not ideal, is it? But would, what would you say about, about Carl's mentality? Because he's just mentioned that he, you, you both sort of agreed that he would just fish. Mm. Why is that a good thing when you're under pressure, Rob, that, that someone is apparently relatively unaffected by, by that? Yeah, he's, he's, he's in his element. Yeah. A happy angler is a good angler. You know, mm. like I say, when you get a good draw and you're both buzzing off each other, like it's going to happen. We're going to get to the final. You, you just fish, didn't you? Yeah. And you just, you just, you just go for it, and it just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and like I say, you could have gone there four days before, completely different weather material. You know, and you'd have smashed them on the bottom, and then you're stuck in that. Well, I caught them on the bottom last week. Is mm. it really? Mm -hmm. So that's why we don't practice. It's because you have to see it on the day. Okay. And with the weather we had, yeah, it, it wasn't fish on the so bottom. We both knew. We both knew what was going to happen eventually yeah. and, it, and it happened talk us through those th those first few hours Carl what what were the tactical discussions that you had I can't remember what we actually started off with I think just, spotting over zigs yeah, wasn't it? just spotting over zigs that was it we started mm. off with spotting over zigs um, and sort of nothing it was really happened. windy wasn't it it was and you couldn't float a fish that was it yeah it was yeah. It bl blown right down the other side wasn't it yeah so you couldn't punt. We didn't, didn't. We didn't want to punt any floaters, like knowing that they was obviously just going to blow well out of our swim, which is a disaster, right? Because yeah. you're going to alert someone else down the pond that there's fish on top. Yep. And That's take the it. Only problem with yeah. floater fishing, you know, you're. Yeah, it's the you wind. Can put them out and then they just the fish are just gone from you. Then were you seeing fish, Carl? Were they? Still yeah, they were. They was everywhere. Yeah. All yeah. over the place. So, so for those of us, I mean, uh, for those people who don't know the disabled on B1. Talk to me about what it looks like and what kind of areas you've got access to from there. It sort of it tips out on the court. It's like as you go through the entrance, it's literally the first swim as right, you come yeah. in on the yeah. right hand side. But they pegged us one to the left, didn't they, this time? Not yeah. actually directly in the disabled swim. Yeah. So it's yeah. one to the left. It's sort of on the tip of the actual point swim mm. we've sort of had. We didn't actually have as much was, water as we thought, did there we? There was no one, they'd, they'd, sec they'd done it in sections where they hadn't actually pegged the point as such okay you know it was pegged on the corner next to the reeds and the other one was in the two shallow ends wasn't think, it yeah. so we actually yeah we didn't have bundles of water but we had enough didn't we yeah mm -hmm. just you enough, know, we didn't have the point coming into our water which was nice yeah sorry rich what lake are we on i'll pull up a uh b1 yeah, yeah good idea um, yeah, yeah. so linear fisheries okay. raise nice one um we'll direct you in tope but um is it do i remember is there a bit of a shallow plateau in that area yes, there is, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, is that remotely relevant to to what happened? They started showing, didn't they? Remember, they fifteen did, yeah, reps. Yeah. They started showing there. They right. did, and um, we tried everything on the zigs. We threw every color, every depth. Went from spotting over zigs, like it was just literally blitzed hemp. Yeah, it was just pure blitzed hemp. 
fishing little bits of black foam and little white zigzags. Go on, Rob, guide him yeah. in. Yeah. There's a few lakes now. We're going to do that by yeah. myself. Uh, Carl, where are we here? So that would be Mr. Harbuck Sniffs. That's the easy one, isn't it? Um, sure. So you need to go up, Tobe. Up, no, no, up. It's more over. Drag it up. Yeah. They, they go. keep going up, yeah, up, 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 up. There's Harbuck Sniffs. That's so this it is there. B1 here. That's it, yeah. Yeah, so that the right end of the two sort of um, up there. No, up. That's Harbuck Smith. That, that one. one. That's that one. It. There she is. God, do you know what? I didn't know B2 was bigger. Yeah. Is it a little bit bigger, is it? It's a little bit bigger. We did look at there. So, Rob, to where, you, where your cursor is now, yep. um, you know, that's the points water. So the point is actually over there. And we were right. positioned in the swims. That's it there. Yeah, yeah, just that. in them ones there. So, you know, we did have a look. And you can see by that, it's the slightly shallower area. Yeah. You know, and the rest of it is pretty. So uniform. where were you guys? Were you around here? We were here, sorry. Oh, just stand at the side. Yeah. Um, and you see that big shallow plateau to our right. That wasn't our water. Um, that was another section. So the lads that we had in our section where we were here, okay, we had another pair in this one here. To the left, yep. Yeah, which is a very, very good area also. And, one opposite. and then bang opposite. Oh, so the sections might, like, yeah. doesn't even bear much relevance to, you've got people on the far side of, of B1, well. right. Yeah, and to, and to us, like, you, you could almost, from what we were seeing, write that peg off. Okay. I, did, I didn't see it doing no. much. So you're only up against one person then. That's why it even was even more of a good swim. And they're next door and you can see exactly what they're doing. Left, yeah. you know, I, I said to Carl, I said, depending who gets first, yeah. you know, surely they're going to go and disabled. Depending who it is, you know, if maybe they're, mm. you just, I don't know, don't know them for instance, I'd quite happily take someone on from that left peg yes. because it's, it's a very, very, very good area of the lake. And um, like I said, we didn't have to worry about it in the end, but it, it actually, that peg that I just mentioned won the second qualifier mm -hmm. and they beat Oscar, who was in, and they beat Mark. Uh, that was a section of doom, wasn't it, in the, set, in the second qualifier? Yeah, so Oscar come out first, went into our peg, and then the two people that come last and Stone Cold last obviously saw what happened in the previous match. Yeah. Everyone else that come out third, fourth, they just ignored it, and Mark Garlick come out last, second from last, second, second from last, yeah. went opposite, opposite us, which was... I thought it was mad of them. And I was speaking to Bet Bart as well, and he, they went over there, but yep. they know that place at like the back of their hand. And they'd done well to begin with, didn't they? But yeah. then. The wind killed them. Yeah. Um, what's their names? Phil Nash, Burry, oh, it? mate, Terminators, isn't they? Absolute yeah. term. Been doing it years. Yeah. Um, just destroyed the, the whole thing. No, the interesting thing is, a lot of these lads, Rob, they're not household names by any means, are they? No. You guys know them. They're on the match scene, and quite often they've been on the match scene a long time. Yeah. Um, do you think they're underestimated by, let's say, the the, pu the public that likes them myself? They're mustard, right? They are. <laughs> you yeah. don't, you, they are so so good. Mm. You know, they're not fussed about social media. Um, they just go fishing a you lot. Know, you know, and trust and this me. is a lot of the field, right? That that mm. are, are, are good at a good level, another level, another level. Mm. You know, match anglers make some of the best carp anglers because they've only got forty eight hours to do it. You know, and they're catching a lot more than. Joe Average. You and do you know? think that a lot of the, the time that, that this is this is the the majority of their fishing is either building up to this or or is this match fishing? You know, as opposed to a lot like what we'd call pleasure fishing. Mm. Um, yeah, this is that's this is their highlight of the, of the year. Mm -hmm. You know, they qualifier semi final, and they probably do have a little matches in between as well. You do some regional yeah, stuff, do, don't you? Yeah. And friends matches, and there's a bigger matches. scene now, isn't there, than ever? Is, really, mate, yeah. It because is. back in the day, it was just this, really. It was. That was the one, wasn't it? And yeah. then other ones have popped up, little regional ones. And then there's some ones at Abbey Lakes now in France, Creek Lakes ones, Fisherbill ones. Yeah. There's some really cool matches. And it's mm. um, it's the same faces that enter it because we're addicted to it. Yeah. We really enjoy what, that. What kind of financial uh, commitment does this kind of thing involve, Rob? Mm. Like, if you want to enter several matches a year, we, we're talking thousands, right? In, in in entry fees, yeah, potentially, and yeah. everything else that goes with it, time yeah. off work, yeah. bait. You know, when the naturals were about, it was triple expensive, mm. quadruple, mm. because you're spending, you know, potentially five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds on enough naturals to um, compete with the next guy that's got that same amount. Yeah, you know, so um, so it's got a little bit cheaper. Must be a slight relief now. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> it's one of them. Look, I enjoyed it because you you just catch more, mm. you know, and if you do get a, a, a bad draw. You know, you're still going to catch a bundle of carp. You're still not going to compete yeah. with the lad that's in the flyer because he's on the main main fish. He's got the right bait. He's going to catch more carp. Mm. End of story. Mm. But you're still having a good weekend. Mm. Um, where now it's a bit more trickier. But yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely less expensive. Can I ask? Do you share the same mentality in the sense that you're happiest competing within your fishing? Mm. Yeah. 
absolutely. So you don't get the same buzz just fishing, mate. You can catch Not as much. You can catch a nine pounder in a match. Means the world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it I'll qualify. I'll qualify in Barston next year. If you get an upper double, you've had a touch. Yeah, that upper double will mean just as much as landing a forty on it. It in your would, own yeah. fishing, and yeah. that's no joke. And it, it, um, it might be a naive question, but as carp anglers, you know, we we generally love the fish we fish for. Do you have time to appreciate each fish that you catch? No, Definitely not really. Not. No. Right. Now, even then, ones at Kingsbury, they were lovely carp. You Do know, you photo them? On your phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you'd be like, right, he's, he's got a nice camera. But yeah, it's just like, it's just, it is just weight. But yep. they do mean so much. Mm -hmm. They really do. Like a double Noel would be like a double last night, but you'd be buzzing one in a match. Do you think that people understand? Do you, do you, in fact, it feels like you're doing something very different. It's not, almost not even carp fishing. This is something different again. Mm. This this is, you know, a long way from the common practice that I would understand. Mm. If you've got that competitive nature in you, you know, you will love match fishing. Yeah. That's why seat box match fishing is, I'd, I'd love to get into it again properly because you can do so many more matches. I know you do it, don't you, Tobes? And well, yeah, I was just going to say, Rich, comparing yeah. it to, we just had uh, Christian Jones on the Guru podcast, who's just won Fisher Mania. And a lot of what he said is, 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 is very similar. Um, and the money's bigger, Rob. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they yeah, 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 should be on there next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it, the, the love of it, like you said, Rob comes from the the, the competitive edge, and and mm. he had a very close finish. I know you guys, it, it was close as well. But it, it's all about that kind of, um, yeah, that build up, that build up, that build up, and then to to winning it. And like you said, every fish counts, and you don't really yeah. get the time to appreciate what's coming in. You don't. Um, but like you said, they're all you know, they're all addicted to it as well. They go mm. every year, mm. and that, so, those yeah. I mean they're very intense fields as well. Those boys, are, you get you tend to get a lot of the top names, don't you, that qualify yeah, for yeah. those finals. I, I went to film um frankie down uh, uh for a feeder masters uh the practice match mm. and um everyone's there ringer mick Biles, like lee carey Fred, like all the bit like you said it's the same yeah. names in the same finals every year yeah and the level of angling is just ridiculous it's just yeah it's it's, it's, it's got it is it got better do you think as well the level of angling in match fishing or has it always been that just elite elite do you angers? know what like i think it has um you, you know, and, and again, comparing it to the to the Guru podcast, but you see, so you're seeing other names come through and win, you know, like your fish shows and mm. stuff like that. Um, don't get me wrong, the big names are still, in my opinion, you know, your ringers are still on another you level. You don't need him stuff. in a fly idea. No, mate, you don't want to be drawing next <laughs> no. to him or him in your section or something no. like that because it doesn't matter if he's on fish or not, he's still going to pull something out the bag. Yeah. Mate, I've, I've, I've said it and I'll say it for the rest of my life. Match anglers, you know, it's like, your style of match angling, like seat box anglers, yeah, they yeah. make the best carp anglers as well. Yeah, because yeah. Because they understand the feeding of it, which is so important in fishing in general, they know it more than anybody. The I, lot, they yeah, just, they know. Ridiculous. And I think it does come down to the time constraints because mm. they've, they've got, you guys got a weekend, they've got five hours. Yeah. They've got to make it happen there and then. And the changes that they make, like they, not that yours don't, but you know what I mean. The yeah. time's so much smaller. The changes that they make, that's the difference. Absolutely. You know, you need yeah. to, you need results within mm. half an hour, minutes even. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've never actually met him, but there's a lad you'd probably know him as well. He's a good lad, actually. Um, ben Hag. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A terminator on a seat box, but then he'll go to linear on a, on a, on a carp fishing trip yeah, yeah, and yeah. terminate it again. Yeah. You mate, know, they, they're just so much rounded anglers. Yeah, we had... Um, you know, Will Raisin came on the Guru podcast. This was really funny, Rich. You're like this. He he came on uh, and we were just talking away and we got started about what he does in his spare time. He's like, no, I go fishing. Matt's like, no, no, no. Like, what do you do outside? He's like, no, my spare time to pass time is go fishing. Yeah. He's like, I just fish for bigger fish. I had a 40 pounder at the weekend. And Matt's just like, what? It's mad. It's I just, think, they're, they're always on it. I yeah. think, is, isn't there a, like a fair shout that, that Will is like the best like angler in the, in, in the UK? Will is... What, yeah, not not only a fair shout for the UK, but he's highly respected throughout mm. Europe as well. Like I mean, the just, boys, the just boys catches fish. Yeah, he's just uh, he he is the definition of terminator. Yeah. He just knows how to catch fish, and and the European teams all just, you know, when they see the England team on the bank, it's all like wheels there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and they're yeah, the yeah. ones that the European lads are like, mate, you don't want to draw mm, next to Will nah. Raisin. It's game over. Mm. Yeah. But so you guys had had the guy, the other thing I was going to ask Rob. How much are you monitoring what the other lads are doing? Because obviously at the, that moment in time, you, you're trying this, the uh, the zigs and the spotting of zigs, and it isn't working. 
Mm. Um, are there fish being caught around the pond? Fish terrible. No. no, it didn't did it that first day. Again, it's just, it it's threw everyone. Day, it? Yeah. It was so hot that they weren't, it weren't going to fish well on the bottom. And, and that day was just not perfect for float fishing. You know, and everyone was a little bit reluctant to, firstly, you know, even if you got them going, unless you're fishing over depth zigs, it'd have been very, very tricky to catch them on the surface. And again, mm. you, you've got that constant worry in the back of your mind. If you put 10 spoms out, they might come up 30 yards later, 30 yards down the bank, and then you've given someone else not only an opportunity, but your fish. Yeah. You've just gave them your fish. Mm -hmm. So everyone was on a little bit like... Don't want to be the first guy to do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's play the long game here a little bit. Yeah. And let's face it, timing is key mm -hmm. and getting up again. We got up early. At uh, four in the morning massive. we got up and started yeah. doing it. So when it's largely much quieter wind you might wise. get we we knew we had three hours or so didn't we that before the wind what, was good. when you get up early on these matches and you look around the pond are lads up and about and generally yeah yeah yeah, yeah generally. because they know that right even if i don't like getting up i'm gonna i've got 48 hours to you've looked to, forward to this yeah. weekend you've you've made it happen in the semi quarterfinals you've got to the semi if you're up not up at five o'clock yeah. four in the morning whatever yeah. looking for him trying to make it happen trying to come up with a plan you, did you, you talk through the night or, or certainly through the evening about what you were going yeah. to do the next morning I said I remember we woke up that morning to a bite when the, when the Zigwad went oh my Zigwad yeah went Cole Zigwad went yeah so but yeah I'm tired I've been up f four o'clock this morning yeah, mm -hmm. you've got the whole anxiety of the draw the stress that drains on you as well yeah that does take that does, setting up in the heat it's been hot all day and the first night everyone is a little bit you know you're not giving it 110% that's for sure um but yeah, that um, that morning we got woken up, didn't we, to mm. your Zigwad. And, but it just, while we were playing it, it just looked bang on, didn't it, for a yeah. floater. It just... So once again, you've, you're you going to abandon the tactic that you've almost, well, that you've you just, just caught you, on. The plan was always, wasn't it, if we're going to, if we're going to haul, yeah. there's only one way to haul. And that's not going to be like by nicking them on zigs. It's going to be getting them pac man on the surface. Okay. And that's what B1 is known for. You can get big hits when the conditions are completely against you, as long as you can get them going. So you've landed a fish, which was how big do you, do you got? 20, yeah, it'd be 28, anything out of B1, you know, it's generally 18 to 25 yeah. and then you get that better stamp as well. And had there been many fish at that point, what was your marshal saying about where you were? Yeah, so it's always the case, isn't it? First flight, whenever the marshal comes around to check, you're always like, who's that bot? What's yeah. he had? And, and it, it was same, wasn't it? It, it was yeah. like, I've not been woken up tonight, mm. you know? So we was like, well, we've had one. So you, you're, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. It's not like, it could, it's happened before where you've gone to say, Dave, what happened? Oh, matey boy in the corner, he's had 10. Bloody hell, down there. Dooming, yeah. D yeah, <laughs> but you ain't got to worry about it it's not no. in your section. No, no. You only can Dave, what did matey boy next door catch? No, he's yeah. had nothing. I've not been out to him. Yeah. Touch, we've got one. So the zig that you caught on, Carl, had that remained overnight just in situ? Had you been spawning no, through the night? In situ then. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't just chuck it out. So kind of a bit, of, was bit out of the blue it. then, really. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. You say it's yeah, out of yeah. the blue, but you've done, you've done all, what you can. Yeah, yeah. Zigs are powerful that first hour of light. You know, that's, okay. that's the. You know, if you, Talk if to me about that because I don't do a lot of zigging, Rob. Like. They're just, the, I honestly believe they're naturally higher in the water that first period of the morning. You'd often see them with their backs at the water okay. for the first hour before dark yep. hour, uh, hour after light first mm -hmm. hour into light first hour after and then it just goes a little bit dormant if you leave them but yeah they just i believe they are naturally higher in the water and which makes so that was part of the plan you were going to leave the zigs in situ for that key period mm. but the wind had calmed off we both said didn't we, we was going to get yeah. up early and spot over zigs you know but we had that bite a little uh, sorry put floaters out yeah but that that bite got us up a little bit earlier mm -hmm. um and then while he's playing it Carl was like Get floaters out, uh, get floaters out. Are the rods set up already? Do you have like multiple setups? Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got like two so controllers you, each. Yeah. Two each? Yeah. And, and it, you're fishing like a, the, the big inline jobs? That's big old corder. So you can, you can put them out 110, 120. And leave them, crucially or not? You can uh, do. Yeah, yeah if, it's flat, off, if it's yeah. flat calm enough, you haven't got to mend your line so much. But in the sense that you could fish four rods mm. all out in the swim and not have to constantly sort of um, be be aware of we've i think we we've flight fishing you, yeah you've got to concentrate on your one rod because you're because constantly you each, mending yeah. your line so otherwise yeah. if your float starts drifting too much in the wind then your then your free offering is floating a lot lot quicker than yeah. the free offering so and the, they, actually it just cancels it out it cancels if you've it out got, massively if you've got two rods in the game and yeah. when they start pac-manning on four six and eight mil pellet 
if you haven't got the right hook bait on like we found yeah, yeah. go on tell me people what happened pulling oh, air we, can't, out, we they? can't say too much I've got this little okay. trick and I <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, give us some give us put, um, let's have ballpark okay. like what what kind of things were going on it's a tight so, look, you were too big your hook bait's too big presumably yeah, yeah. the key to anything whether you're on the bottom a zig you're mimicking yeah. what you're feeding yeah. there's no good putting an 18 mil bright pink pop up amongst like, a 6 mil pellet what's going to happen they're going to engulf everything and leave yeah. your hook bait there. It's nice to have a visual aspect out there, mm -hmm. but that's when finesse comes into it. But I'm interested that knowing that you actually started differently. Um, what do you mean? Well, in the sense that you had to change your hook bait. So you were initially, you were, you were wrong about it. <laughs> Cole was wrong. Cole yeah. was wrong. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I owe my, my hands up. Shit, that was. blame. No, I was. No, I started off. He, I got, was only a, fishing. he got a coaching session in Florida. Yeah, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually started off with like a 12 mil, trimmed down a little bit, not much. Then, yeah, I was pulling my air out because then he had two straight away and I was like, God, something's not right here. Then I had to dap myself, changed, and then started catching fish straight away then, straight after then. Okay. Um, so when you first put the floaters out, what was the reaction? Instant, wasn't Instant. it? Instant. Power and time. your eyes light up at that point. Mate, I looked at Carl. Carl looked at me and was like, we've qualified. Straight up. Wow, right. It was so like that many there. It was, it was loads. It was like being at Drayton. But you were, it, it kind of puts me in mind of what you said earlier about being in the lead. Mm. At that point, you could get obliterated from elsewhere on the pond. You've caught one carp. Mm. They all pop up in front of you. I'd be like, practically shitting myself that they that, to keep them there like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know was that and, that and, worry and, and then that was when it come into you know you got to settle down and okay. getting the right amount of feed out there as in not too many spawns where yeah. you get them going crazy and then you get a little bit drift they don't eat it all and then yeah. that little bit drifts off and then okay. the fish follow them so it's just putting enough out to manage keeping the fish there but without overfeeding it and letting the, letting the floaters okay. drift off so you're constantly both saying to each other they've finished that lot Let's get another two in. And they were so reactive to it, weren't they? It's yeah. like a spawn went in. You're not it's even reeling it in. Big spawns or? Um, X's. It's just, I use them X spawns. Okay. Wolf X spawns. So they're quite big, yeah. aren't they? They're not, well, they, they, hold, not small. they hold liquid as well, which is right. really good. So we've cut lacing them with salmon oil and hemp oil. Right. You know, because it slicks the water off. Yep. And any sort of wind you have got. Um, and it takes all the fluff off the surface as uh -huh. well. So you're not reeling really across that yep. all the time. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just managing that situation, wasn't it? And yeah. Um, getting the hook baits right like Cole again he's done more float fishing on there than I have and mm -hmm. he was like oh, I'm going to absolutely club them if we get them on the top so they've, they've pack manned yeah. and I'm looking like Cole like come on then let's, let's club it <laughs> <Yeah>. and, <he laughs> puts his, and when he was casting it out like I've done so much float fishing I love it I enjoy doing it um, and he's putting this pink pop out there and I'm thinking no, was you even on pink? Was no, you? little I was brown, little, little brown. browny one yeah. yeah little brown like activate your colour you know yeah. trying to match yeah. the colour of the free offerings thinking it's a bit it's double the size of these free offerings we're putting out i was like i ain't got to worry about Carl. we know what you're doing yeah and they're just pack manning all around him and even cole was like oh, should we get a bite should mm. we get in a bite Rolled it straight in and yeah. um but i've got a little way of doing it yeah. it takes honestly it must take well i only i only made eight of them up for the match because i think about half an hour to 45 minutes each okay. to make these yep. i'm imitating what i'm feeding yep. basically that's very you know, nice it's yep. ag getting the balancing of it absolutely key you know, they see nothing. It is a free offering in their eyes. Um, game changer, wasn't it? Yeah. We well, started whacking them then, Rob, presumably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We so what are we away. talking? How quick and uh, how many? Uh, we, was in, we was on 10 fish within hours. And and what was the reaction around the pond? Get floaters out. <laughs> Get floaters <laughs> out. Well, well, even know. if they didn't have fish in their water, they'd just spawn with their life. was struggling, weren't they? Yeah. Everyone else was like ripping their arrow out. Yeah. Right. But yeah, floater fish, we just nailed it. And I know in that second qualifier, Oscar's a terminator. Oscar thought he's a great mm. angler, mm. fantastic angler. He couldn't get him on the surface either. He'd right. done well, but he could only catch him on over depth zigs. Okay. You know, so we just nailed, just, you know. So you're when you're 10 fish in, are you home and hosed? We thought so, didn't we? To mm. be fair. You'd, because you've we're gone still, that far away from the field. Bites. Right. We're still fish in front of us. Matey boy in our section to our left and opposite. I don't think they'd caught at this stage, would I? No. So, no. But your biggest problem would have been the guys to your left presumably because they're, they're most likely to be able to nick fish off they're the like, edge of you only worry because we haven't got to worry about if mate yeah. if they, all these fish move and they go down the other bit opposite the lake have fun We've, as long as they're not on matey boy next door or opposite yeah. you yeah. know that's the beauty of sections and, and how aware do you have to be let's say let's for a minute 
let's let's rewind to before you started clubbing him. How aware do you have to be of Matey over the far side? Like, how often do you need info about what's going on? You're always they're always in the back of your mind when you go to bed at night. Obviously, you know what I mean. It. Yeah. What's he up to? Is he catching? Anyone know? Yeah, anyone when know. a headlight comes on in the middle of the night, Coles, yeah. you got one over there. Yeah. <laughs> how much sleep do you get then, guys? Not much, to you be don't. fair. You don't. You can't. And then you wake up with a blind panic. bag of fun when you get home from these things, aren't you? <laughs> it's a write-off. I yeah. sleep for like 24 hours. Yeah. Right. It's a write-off. It's that bad. Yeah. yeah. The missus presumably knows what to expect, Rob. Yeah, and she still wants the washing down. And all, oh, no, she don't. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. Yeah. Um, it's, it t- takes it out, yeah. Yeah, especially when you've got a little one. I suppose the thing is, it doesn't matter what you're doing out there. Like, you've still got to get home and get on with the, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, daddy two, duties. Two days you, so. sleep divide. You're probably sunburnt as well because you're not even taking care of yourself. You're mm-hmm. not drinking properly. You're not eating properly. It's, yeah, you, you, you go into survival mode, didn't you, a little bit that last yeah. night? I got um, burnt on my neck. But you, 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 you're on an adrenaline buzz. Yeah. You know? I mean, in terms of the family, um, Carl, I don't know about your. Do you, do you have do you have family yourself or? Yeah, yeah, I ain't got misses or nothing. No. Okay, so perhaps a little bit different for you, but Rob, in terms of the the family side of things, does um, the missus see it as something that you know is potentially a financial benefit, and you're you're providing, mm. or is it the sort of thing that's done? It's your thing, and you're doing it for you, and it's it, and it's part of your fishing hobby. You know, how does it all sit? Like I mentioned earlier on, mate, it's. That trophy means more than ten grand. Honestly, okay. the, the ten grand will come and go. Yeah, you know, having your name on that, I don't think she gets that side of it. Mm-hmm. You know, but I know she's my missus. I'm lucky, so she's competed in a lot of horse riding stuff. Okay, you know, and she's very, very, very good at it. So she understands that you know level of wanting to compete and doing well. So and she's more than happy. So you could be like, here you go. Here's the ten grand. I'll have the trophy. Cheers. Like yeah, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're ten fish in. You're you think you're home and hosed. How long of the match was there still to run? Yeah, best part of twenty four hours, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, finished at midday uh, the next day, and we was midday at that stage. And were you sort of in your heads? Were you would you have been happy had it been toe to toe to to float a fish through the night? Would you have done that? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. done. Yeah, but yeah, it just went quiet, didn't it? But, it did. Yeah, we're just we're on our element we've come out first in the draw we're on the carp we're catching carp we're happy now you know? is it a bigger buzz to be to have pulled away from the field like you did there or to be in a ding dong battle with the with the guys opposite or whatever <laughs> nah pull away we're going to come on to that aren't we for the final I think yeah. anyway but yes. but in terms of pulling away for your qualifier yeah so. is that as good as it gets it's the dream yeah, right. yeah it's, we're, we're, we're doing it you know we're, we're in the semi-final it's all playing out perfectly. We're on the carp. We're catching them. We've got the tactics perfect. Yeah. You know, it is just, we, you can you can enjoy it a little bit you more. Can, yeah. You can. We did enjoy that second half of the match. So it once becomes fun. Yeah. yeah. You, and you can, enjoy, sorry, you can enjoy playing carp again. And mm. you where, know. Where, where it's fish for fish, that's horrible. Like playing <laughs> that one that I lost. At Kingsbury. The, yeah. yeah. Horrible. Didn't yeah. You don't enjoy it. All you want to do is see that fish get over the net. Mm-hmm. But when you've got a little bit of a lead, you can't see yourself getting turned over. Yeah. It does. You do oh, have a bit you of You accidentally a... lost that what, unit, didn't you? Oh, in there? mate. <laughs> Did you lose the beast of braise now? <laughs> no, I don't know if it was the beast, but, mate, it was a beast, it was wasn't it? a decent one. It, right. weren't, it weren't no 35 pounder. Right at the net and all. Yeah. I mean, even stuff like that, Rob, it's a different context, isn't it? Like, presumably, you, you know, your biggest from braise knows, had you caught it in a match, you wouldn't have felt. It, the, the feelings would have been entirely different. You'd have been like, "No, this is this is great." Was we're even further ahead, but actually, yeah. I've caught a forty pounder or something from yeah, 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 from B one. Nah, but people, if you've gone for pleasure, you'd be buzzing. They to get forties, yeah, yeah. Just, a lot of people was trying to target that, didn't they? Mm. And um, yeah, it would have been just a number, and it would have mm. st- probably still got a phone shot. Yeah, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, Surely not. If it was the beast, you'd have. Uh, You've got the sky cameras around. Well, do they do they film all that sort of stuff? They don't, unfortunately, do they? No, no it's um, because it's, we had the. I, I've only ever done it once, um, and it was a long long way back. But they had the the cameras at the semis mm. um, in in that that year. So yeah, no, it's a shame it doesn't happen. It gets sh- filmed for BT. BT now, but right? They, yeah, you're not missing. You so you're missing out on the the whole story because the yeah. final doesn't tell the whole story. No, it's just a, it's just a separate match with twelve anglers in it or sixteen anglers in it yeah. sometimes. But yeah, the struggle getting to the finals. So, in terms of the names that you knew were through from your, uh, did you did was the rest of the field sort of unfolding as you'd have expected? Pretty much, Ash Izzard done what he does. Yeah, he done well. Just, done. Yeah, done really well on the surface again. Clubbed him, didn't he? To be fair, yeah. he nearly caught up with us. He did. Yeah. Um, Josh, 
done really well, didn't yeah. he? So I didn't know a lot about Josh. He's in, he didn't lose the match scene, is he? He's done it. He's, yeah, he hadn't done the BCCs very often. But yeah, he's but he's, sort of, he's again, okay. very good talent in Langley down his way, top of manor, cloaking farm okay. sort of venues. Yeah. He do, and he, he done well, mate. He, he beat the rest of the field, didn't he? For yeah. He beat Callum and Aaron and... You know, my money would have been on them to be fair in that swim, wouldn't it? Yeah. But they beat them. They done mm. with it again. Mm. Just again, you can just you you can just relax and see watch it all unfold from that point and yeah, yeah. Turn your thoughts to the final. Mm. Um, how does it feel to to have qualified for the final? Obviously, your eyes are on the prize. You feel you must feel like you're only halfway there in a way, but you've actually accomplished a big thing in qualifying at all. Mm. It is, isn't it? It's the final. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's what you talk about. You can't relax, right, presumably, because your job's not done at nah, all. Far from. You've got yeah. the hardest bit now. You've now got the last... How many's in the final? Is it 12? It was 16. It was 16 just yeah. gone, yeah. So, yeah, you're down to the last 16. And you can guarantee that seven or eight of them are like... You'd expect them to be there. Yeah. You know, they're just they're, they're just going to be there. And and if any of those seven or eight get the flyer, they've won. Yeah. Pretty right. much. Pretty right. much, mate. Yeah. That that last creep match just finished at Cole got back from. Yeah. I called it on the draw. Right. We all did. To <laughs> all be fair. did. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, you just, you don't need, it was, yeah. bit, it was Jamie at London's again. Right. You know, you don't need him in the flyer. No, no. He's pulled the absolute flyer. Because any, any of you boys are going to have the skills yeah, yeah, to yeah. do it. Yeah. Um, okay. So walking away from linear, what was y your thoughts? Do they immediately turn to that? Are you immediately discussing? I mean, how far away was the Broadlands final? Well, was it long? Was it a month? Two months, maybe June, yeah. July to September. Yeah, cut yeah. six weeks. So plenty of time plenty to, of to time get your head to, around yeah. it. I mean, is it is this a venue that you know? It's held the final before. I think Ian Poole and yeah, John Finch won it there. I've been in a final think. there before. Have well. you? Yeah, I've been in a final. Oh, so you did know? So you've been in a final there. That's, so that, Mate, that's good info, right? Years. You know, this is going back. I've been recorded five years. This is going back eight, nine years ago. Really? You so know, so it's like almost like irrelevant. Fisheries changed so yeah. much in that that time period. What, what did you know? You know about that place, Carl? I didn't know anything about it. So it this just, time, yeah. Rob's the one with any info at all. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we couldn't really. Well, he couldn't practice, so I said, "Look, I cannot go there blind. I have to go there and do a little bit." So I fished the whole week prior to the actual match, leading up to it. It's sort of. I'm glad I did because I learned a hell of a lot in that space of that week. Talk to me about that week, Carl. What went on? Well, I had a few fish, but it was just chopping and changing things and knowing where they were and what they do they just follow the wind like mad so how there. on earth do you um so assimilate all of that information in a short time because you've got to learn a fishery in in a few days you do yeah how sort do you do of, it sort of ringing other people as well who know it like the back of their hand like yeah. friends and stuff yeah so getting the information off them as much as you can and what and then comparing that with yeah. what you see on the day yeah right so that's, and then it was just sort of getting a half sensible draw then what did you find out? I mean, let, let's let's be talk specifics. What did you find out during that week that you then discussed with Rob about tactics and draw bag strategy? Well, it's an out and out boily water. It's, it's obvious because of all the bream and stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, you, you sort of wouldn't dare fish like a sort of pellet or anything like okay. that. So it was, yeah, it was down them sort of routes on it. Mm. Yeah. And then it was sort of... In terms of areas, what were you yeah, saying to Rob sort of, about what yeah, you favoured? Yeah, the areas was definitely on the ends. Like so the, each end of the lake. Yeah, each end of the lake and then depending where the wind was blowing. Tell you what, Tobe, let's pull this up, mate, because I, I, I've never been there. I've driven past lake, it on the motorway mate. a few it's times. An but, interesting lake. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's but were you, were, you, were you sort of aware, Rob, that it had changed? <sighs> how, how difficult was it for you to divorce um, the information that you had from the past to what mm. you felt you were bringing into the so match? I didn't have the best experience well, we're the going in the uh, Ro Romsey is it yeah, where are we we're here. Romsey in Hampshire I think uh, it well, might not Broadlands. be Romsey Broadland if you put Broadlands Lake Hampshire in Toby you might find it mm. because I'd like to see it. it's quite broken up Rob isn't it with islands it's a long and, old lake yeah it's, long, it's broken it? up right. yeah it's broken up by um, is it two central islands it is isn't it yeah it's yes, two it central is, yeah. islands um, there it is uh, and interesting lake look at that bit of 3D yeah, let's, do, let's go with the 3D. Love that. Oh, Look at that. Oh, that that oh, brings oh, back some memories, right. doesn't it, Carl? <laughs> so, wow. so, Carl, talk us through this. So you've got the River Blackwater on the left-hand end there and the test on the other end. Um, it was the two ends that you... Yeah. Had, so, the, so, yeah, this right-hand corner. Yeah. That's it. Top that right was, corner, right yeah. on the motorway. No, yeah, right in that corner there. Yeah. More right. More right, Tobe. There, there you go. That's from there. Yeah, that was... Let me throw it up for a yeah, moment. Like, Evan's sort of first choice. First was choice. it? If, if he was picking, yeah. yeah. And that's... 
what that looks to me just like a, an area of open water. Yeah, but you've got like a no fishing bank where it says M27, uh -huh, uh, yeah. that whole bank's not being fished. Um, so you've got that whole area? Uh, yeah, apart yeah. from where you are now, there's a peg there uh, and a peg where you are now, to be fair. Oh, so there's like four four pegs in that one bowl, isn't there? Bowl, yeah. uh, oh, really? Yeah. It's, so you're it's literally staring angles. at the guys across? Yeah, 16 anglers in that section, but you just got to go from previous match wins because... And the whole lake is pegged, Rob? Yeah, the whole yeah, thing. So there's literally a peg there, a peg there, a peg there, a peg there, there, there. So, could, in the light of that, I mean, it's going to be tough for those of us of, of you listening. But talk to me about your top three, top five. Like, what what were you thinking at the time? <sighs> Again, it was just previous match wins, it wasn't was, it? And yeah. It's never been won from a central area. It's always been won down there. An, an end. An end, because right. that's where they naturally go when there's, there's a bit of pressure on it. Because it, it's generally always pegged the same. Yeah. And fish just tend to act the same when it's pegged like that. They go to like what they class as a safe area, I guess. Yeah. You know, that's so you the, knew where you didn't want. And this is on this oh is not a watercraft draw. So you could be in the lap of the gods here. You could yeah. get middle of that island sort yeah. of thing. There's at least <laughs> four or five absolute stinkers, there, aren't there? Yeah. Where you just... You How many that. can win it though, Rob? One, two, three, four. Go show me. I'll show Whereabouts? I still, I'm still very limited on what I know at Broadlands, <laughs> but even even from that match win, you know, that peg there is very good. So left hand end, sort of. Yep, that one yeah. there, that one there on paper should do really well, but, but it, it never doesn't. does well in a match sense. Don't know why, but it, there's always fish in that area. So we was on the point here. So you were over here. Yep. Yeah. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So you weren't even in the bowl that you'd have nah, favoured. Okay. No. Right. No. Nah. Um, the bowl. Uh, Looks a great swim, by the way. It's got on yeah. paper, you know, design a carp swim the way where you are is nice, isn't it? You've got lots of options there. I think Barry and Ben won it from this section here. Right, where um, did Pooley win it from? I feel like that was in the bowl, was, was it? No, he was down the top end. So he was up here. Yeah, yeah he won it there. Yeah, he won it there. Yeah, it's just some corner pegs again. But you, the, the one area you don't want, there's just it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's no carp alley. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the alongside the island. <laughs> Where you're just looking at oh, an island the whole time. Just, no carp alley. No Literally. carp alley. <laughs> just, yeah. And again, naive question, right? But when you get to the final, once you feel like you've been pegged out of it, let's say, are you fishing for second and third? Can you still can you still get up for that? Are you still looking to to make to, you know win some money and 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 absolutely, you still yeah. got fish. Yeah. Anything they've got fins, that it happens, yeah. doesn't it? You know, you wake up one morning and it's just like. Bloody hell, there's, there's another one, there's another one. It, yeah. it, it, but you generally find on these sort of venues, it, it plays out to how it plays out and they may get opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, no one, the, well, the first fish that came out in that match was from the absolute worst peg in the lake. Right. It but that put oh, set the cat amongst yeah. the pigeons. That would have got people talking, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like Liam Blessing, didn't he? He's, he, he pulled the absolute stink of peg seven. And, um, but yeah, caught the first one. I want, obviously, we want to go right to the start of this. So mm. you've got Carl's info, you've got your out of date info. You, how did you come up with your top with your top picks? Uh, well, Again, it doesn't matter, does it? I suppose matter. because you you're out you you're, you're out you the bag. You put your hand in that bag, whatever number you pull. So you physically do that in this one, and you did this. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we came out early. I think it was quite early as well. Third or something. Yeah. I think so your name was called third, and you walk up. I think it was third. It might, it might be yeah. been second or fourth. I can't. It was around that yeah. top top three or four. Yeah. You just yeah you pull it out. Cole gives you the nudge like, come on, baby, please, just a yeah. nice peg and. um I knew the pegs I wanted. Yeah, you know it was. Pegs. And these numbered are they? Yeah, they're yeah. numbered. Yes, yeah. so they know you ones ones you really want, and you're going up there going, Come on, peg number one, peg number one. Put it out, and it was peg. What was our peg number? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen, and I was like, fourteen, fourteen, it was fourteen, it was fourteen, and it came back to me. Yeah, my last final I done all them years ago was there same peg, and I'm just like, oh no, oh, God, it's middle of the pond. Like we didn't do very you well. You were desperate then. for end of the pond, yeah. But at the same time, we had opportunities that match. Yeah, we did have opportunity. We did have a good seven or eight hours of good fishing in front of us, uh -huh. and you, you, and then you start looking where everyone else comes out. Absolutely, you know. It's and what like, what was happening, mate? I think J Jamie come out fairly late. Jamie Lunders got the flyer, hasn't he? On his own? No, he, with Billy. With Bill, yeah. Bill, Bill and Jay, sorry, yeah. And they've pulled the flyer. No, you know, they've pulled that corner peg, <laughs> and you're just straight away. You're like, it's, over. it's, it's their year. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, fair play to them. I mean, they've been doing it long enough. If anyone's, yeah, mm. that's my thousand pounds on them. You know, they're they're just too good. So they're the new um, whole house and Huntington, like the best never to win it. Is that the kind of the absolutely? Vibe? Yeah, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely, right. and they will. They yeah. will. 
because they're just they're so good. They're very but this good. Was, this was a huge chance. Um, if Bill was if Bill and Jane was here now, they both say to you, "That was their that best, was their best, chance. best yeah. chance." Yeah, mm. yeah. But it's so, fishing. It's just it, yeah. And how quickly did Carl? How quickly did you click in, click into gear and, and start to sort of think about what you knew about the lake from the time there and, and, and assess the, the swim? And you know, what was your what was your thoughts? It was after the first sort of 24 hours. I was late as that. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah. We sort of noticed a different sort of pattern to what we actually thought. We thought it'd be more against the island, didn't we? Mm. But Right hand island or left both? Well, it was yeah. sort of in front of us to our left ish, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they just wasn't there. Like the water level was down to normal, mm. wasn't it? We spoke to Darren Pierce, didn't we, beforehand, and he'd been up there doing it. It's his local. Okay. And to Darren, no, Darren's <clears throat> the man down there. All and, right. and Ricky Moody, wasn't yeah, it? Ricky, yeah. We pulled it, and straight away you get, as as it goes on social media, yeah. where, where who's got where, people are messaging you saying, oh, mate, unlucky this year, or and you've got, got a chance. And what were you hearing? We were in a flyer. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everyone. Was. I was getting random messages from people saying, I put my peg number up on Instagram, I think, on stories, and everyone was just like, you're in a flyer. That's like the bit short. I think it's, it's a long chuck or short chuck. I can't remember. I think it's called short chuck. Yeah. Um, absolute flyer. That's a Terminator swim. And I'm just like, come on, mate. Apparently, like we're yeah. in the, we're in the zone here. So like, you've gone from like dooming to <laughs> yeah. To a... We was never dooming. I don't think yeah. it was like we were happy. There's worse. Like, again, yeah. we could have been you're not carpally, yeah. and we would have been absolute hanging from a rope, hide the leg for <laughs> you know. It's, it's, <laughs> we're going home here. Um, but yeah, everyone that kept replying, and then the BCAC put it up. Mm -hmm. where the pegging was yep. and everyone everyone was commenting at this stage like who's in the who's, who's their money on and our peg kept coming up like good area i'm like where? <laughs> where where's the good area you, you, re you replying in real time on facebook like, I'm messaging where is it guys? Right? <laughs> i'm like uh, i've never met this guy yeah. in my life i'm like come on, why are we in a fire yeah. what, what makes this a fire? which must be surreal for him because you're fishing in the final <laughs> messaging him about mm. you know but it's um that as i mentioned earlier on this is a different situation because it's a, a bait boat lake right you so know, what does that mean for the, for what you could do where you need to be you physically can't get because of these overhangs right and when i first walked onto the lake i've never I've seen it for nine years miles away from me i've never been there yep. cold been there for a week done a bit of face timing but when you first step on a lake it becomes apparent what you're up against mm -hmm. and i remember walking on there going shit <laughs> you're gonna have to win this there's no this this is not easy fishing like everyone's saying it's you have to be not on the island and how underneath. deep are these overhangs oh mate they're coming out like 10 foot yeah you know right. and these guys and there's some of them they're like a foot off the lake and and normally boys are nudging the boat against the island and mate, dropping they're reversing it in put yeah. it, you know what i mean plop it binoculars yeah. the lot we physically cannot get baits impossible never mind the daytime yeah but doing it at night oh. you're squirrel fishing half right. the match <laughs> <laughs> like you're just decorating trees yeah, yeah you cannot get to them and did um, you have a go though initially it's pointless because the problem you could is see it was beyond your the problem reach. is you've only got to put one lead up a tree you get a 12 foot bit dangly line yeah in and you, yeah you're screwed it's trouble um before we talk a bit further about tactics what was your analysis of what it would be needed to win the the thing first off a nice bit of comfortable not comfortable fishing but an area you can get back to repeatability repeatability yeah, yeah. because it's all if, if bites at the time and during the night and you can't get back there at night you've just wasted the whole of how the many fish time. would it need do you think rob did you think i wasn't if from the from the from the previous september booking on i had i wasn't interested in broadens one bit as, no. as a final really i, I don't know it it's not your only experience has been pretty negative in the past pretty negative yeah. i weren't looking forward to it yeah. when i first up the lake i'm seeing all these dirty overhangs just it's going to be hard work you know and i'm just like this isn't going to be doomsville but um even if we'd have come fourth or fifth that still would have gone down as one of the best finals mm. just because the way it was, it was well we're going to talk about the way it, it unfolded joke, because but, yeah it's yeah. very rare that it happens like like it did unbelievable but um you know you've got to catch a few fish you know you want it repeatable how did you fit that up to the swim that you saw in front of you mm. we got hold of a few lads didn't we ask where the it was pretty obvious to be fair where the yeah where you needed to be big old overhang, overhang yep. uh, sorry trunk comes from the thing yeah and you can just visual it from a carp's point of view you know they're just sitting under this big trunk aren't they okay you know but so we snag fishing snag fishing yeah. we're on the point mm -hmm. if you walk out of our swim and do a right and you fish it from that bank you could get under their casting because oh, you haven't got the straight on at it. Straight on. Yeah. You know, if you could, look, we're fishing along here. Yeah. If you could have fished it from there, yep. straight across, yep. 
you're straight in there. You're in the dolly hole. So bear in mind, you've got four rods to deploy here. Yeah. yeah. And so we've you got feel like there's one spot. Yeah. Um, that was the dolly hole, wasn't it? To that be was fair. the best bit. Yeah. Everyone was saying, tree trunk, tree trunk, left right, tree right, trunk. Right, right, right. You know? So we're, and we're looking at it like, you can't get, you can't get to the tree trunk. You know, this is a bait boat yeah. water. These guys yeah, that yeah, message yeah. me are probably fishing it with a bait boat. You know, and they're just... Does that mean you've got, up against that island, in your mind's eye, you had clear areas gravelly is it oh, gravel well, yeah, is it, it bowled out sort of thing where they've peaching. dropped and dropped and dropped yeah, and dropped they're just yeah. you know you've got to remember that there's so many bait boats going out there there's frying stick and boilies yeah you've got the bird life over there is mm -hmm. granite there's no weed you know there's probably no snags either yeah you know it's just a clear but they're safe along there so what did you in the in, in lieu of being able to fire it under there what did you do yes yeah, so we spoke to a few people didn't we and and we fish it to how we saw it really didn't we yeah. we knew it was gonna be an out and out boilie water because of the bream and how many attempts it was going to take with solid bags to get, bearing in mind, we know solid bags are going to go quicker than anything yep. else. But then you've got to like man manage your time so well as in how many times is it going to get us to get this solid bag in play to only catch a bream? Yeah, I was going to say, you've got to put pellet in, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah, we went for the out and out bally attack, didn't we? And yeah. I'm gonna, we got it wrong a little bit, I'd say, because everyone we were speaking to was like, Little spinner, spinner rigs mm -hmm. work really, really well. So we started with spinners against the island. Didn't do well at all. Like it was really bad. Mm -hmm. um, nothing at all. And that put us off the island for for a little while, didn't it? It did for quite a few hours, to be fair. For quite a few hours. But we started off, we fed it. We mm. spotted right against it, slammed yep. in. I don't know, what we put 15 spots out? Yeah, put a bit of bait there. Mm. But we, we came up. left of where we needed to be. Left of the trunk. Yeah, because that way we could fish. And we could get there every night. Tight you, enough. Yeah. All you've yeah. got to do is just get your trajectory right, rely on your clip, you're close to the island. You know when you're doing that, right? Are you are you looking for a really flat trajectory and so firing important. it in? It's so yeah. important. What, and then letting the rod go as well? or It's, it's an art, isn't it? It's, yeah. You're firing it in, so it's traveling a lot quicker than what it normally would, but then you've got to slow it down towards the end because otherwise it's got so much pace, yeah. you've got so much stretch in the line, yeah. you're, in, you're, in, you're right. in the trees. Yeah. So it's a case of literally you're quite a long drop between your, your tip okay. eye and yeah. your lead and you know you just whew, and it, it goes in like that mm. but 20 or 30 yards before it hits the clip what you think is going to hit yep. the clip it's so important that you sort of whip the rod back because that way you've already got your trajectory yep. you've already got your speed but now you need to slow it down so your rod can absorb all that speed mm -hmm. and still get you under there comfortably so you literally you whack it in whew, with the rod and that friction through the eyes slows it, slows it down. Mm -hmm. But then you've still got your trajectory, you know, which is the important part. Um, and then you just whip it back, you hit the clip, and you follow forward. You yep. know, so you've slowed it down. You took all the absorption from the rod, and then you. Yeah, and you were able to fill it down in shallow resolution. Not no, it's, really. It's, again, it's eighteen. You fill it down. down yeah, you're, you're, it's coming back. You want to. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, yeah. you want the as your rig hits the the thing, you want to see a bit of a, a splash. Yeah. And it, if you're hitting the trees. Yeah. You're laughing. Uh, and that, which all sounds great. Were you able to do that from the off? Were there any mishaps or, or are you just firing yeah, it in no. there? We was actually, yeah. It's, You're on fire. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Doesn't always happen. No, don't normally go me. like that. But Many trees well. have been decorated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> which gets you to this point where you're actually good at doing it, right? Yeah. Um, interesting that you both have the same techers on that. You know, or did was that was that actually something you had to... I, I mean, Jolly Ron's being that world rounded, world rounded angler. Yes, you know, yeah. you've, we've been at Farlows, and I've grew up at Farlows. Yeah, and it's, 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 well, yeah, Wolf, yeah. When Cole won that one, one, yeah, you're using long chuck, weren't you? Same yeah, that's thing. Like 118, 115 mm. yards under the, the bushes. Same under yeah. the bushes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. So, so initially, you've gone, you've gone tight. You've spawned. Nothing's happened. What are you thinking? They started showing in the middle, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, right in open water. What in the, between the islands, sort of yeah. thing. Oh, there. Yeah. yeah. And where's the next angler to your right at this point? Yeah. Oh, so almost on them it as well. Almost on their boundary. In between yeah. us both, but, yeah. Um, was there it was in your water, though? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. No, only by a couple of rod lengths. Yeah. There was still fish their side as well, wouldn't yeah. there? Uh, but they were concentrating on the islands and it was getting dark and they were showing they've got a nice there. bay, look by the look of it, in the island there. They could took um, right. They had, they had a quite a forgiving island, to be fair, didn't they? They didn't mm. have any horrible overhangs and they were straight onto it. You know? Do you think that distracted them from seeing what was happening to their left? Or? Um, no, they... They clocked onto it the they second clocked onto day, it the second they? day, didn't they? Yeah, but, they but this is the first day you've seen this. First these. day, yeah. Uh -huh. So going into that first night, I've clocked them going into the dark, and um, I said to Carl, I'm, "I'm coming off the island. You know, yeah. we've got we've got a rod each, mm -hmm. and I had one short as well, didn't I? Yeah. And you had one 
around here somewhere. Yeah. So just so I've got it right for everyone watching. So you started. We're there. You were here, and then you've you've now moved over. To Sorry, there. yeah. So we start. We're, we're fishing here. Yep. This trunk comes in probably about here. Right. It's only okay. a small trunk, six yeah, foot yeah. or so, but it comes out into the lake. Um, that's the dolly hole. Um, but they were just. They seem to show happily. In this little zone here. Oh, so they come out here. Yeah, they just right, they came off the islands, but yeah, yeah. you could notice that the water level was down two foot, wasn't it? No, 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 it wasn't that much. It was like I don't know because I had to keep bringing me rods up each time. I was like, no, it's yeah, like rod tips. Was then, yeah. like, I had to uh, put my rods up because it was just underwater. I was like, well, my rod tips sank. <laughs> yeah, each time I was doing that two or three times. There's a sluice gate, and they let the water in last okay. night yeah. from the river, from yeah. the river, yeah. which. Yeah. which change things on the island which we'll get to okay but, yeah cool, okay um but yeah that first night i done quite well didn't i i, yeah, I, was, I had the only two well. rods in the open water section cole mm. stuck to i can't remember you did you stick to oh, the i stuck one because i won off the island the first night yeah and then i stuck um, to that middle section and, and then in the end yeah we put three in the open water then didn't mm, we and done well i think we was in but bearing in mind there'd been a fair few fish out it was fishing really well okay. like uh, mark sawyer and what's his name uh, is it, uh, oh no oh sorry Darwin Wheeler lads. and think oh yeah 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 Darwin yeah. lads doing they were just to our left by 30 yards and they were there doing they are. that that's one them. back back that's them yeah. terminators <laughs> trust me yeah. absolute machines and they had the tactics right Spot down on. to a T, mate yeah down they didn't seem to be doing a lot where were they next to yeah. us left yeah. Fair, peg 13, 13. next door okay. yeah, yeah they right. just the whether they got info whether they gone and practiced they had it and they were doing well okay. they were okay. winning weren't they yeah they that were just whole... catching nothing but 20 odds yeah, what, what, what stamp what would what stamp were you expecting not that i didn't uh, think well no upper doubles and everything they were catching with like 26 27 pound which <laughs> is like two fish <laughs> and at this point you've had enough encouragement to feel like you're in the you're in the hunt do you feel like you're getting left at, behind at any point no we were only like three or four fish behind it was so nip and tuck there was probably in that first I think to be fair the first 18 hours I think they led it from start to the, the first 18 and after that it was a joke you right know, I don't think they could have written names down any quicker it was just like first second rub that out for Jack Billy and Jamie first so in that it just changed when that's happening do you almost have to forget about the leaderboard yeah pretty yeah. much yeah worry about the last four or five hours that yeah. second night was crucial and the way it was playing out was it done a lot of fish in the evening it done a fair few fish during the night but nine o'clock on the, on the Saturday it went dead, didn't it? Yeah. And it didn't went dead nothing. all day long for everyone. So now we're thinking we've got to like five in the evening. We're in like fifth, fourth. And you know it's all on this the night. Going from last night's experience <laughs> and what's played out after nine o'clock, yeah. it's gone dead. So what's your whoever, anxiety like? You must be like racking your brains just going, what do we do? It's all on tonight, mate. Well, yeah, it, that's it. It's yeah. Just, yeah. You're Could now I, thinking about it's, it's tonight. Can I just rewind briefly before we co cover the sort of eventful last period? What did you do in the open water, Rob? Because we didn't cover that. Oh, yeah. What were you? At? How were you fishing it? Mm. Very similar to how we fish Todba, little uh, IQD rigs yep. with um, little two bait stringers, and that was it. Really, two bait stringers, what, two what, body what stringers, what, no bait, sail, what? Sail, wafters, sail wafters over sail bottom baits. Yeah, wow, little cork dust. Wafters. So minimal. Just they were just jumping on the air. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to start putting bait out and because we're in the open water, we're in bream territory mm. as well, mm. Mm. you know, and I didn't want to start putting loads of bait out, getting them excited. And then my bites disappeared. And I was getting regular action. It was like yeah. every hour and a half, I was getting a bite, 20 pounder. Wait, we do this, this is this is nice. How do you sit on your hands in terms of baiting at that point? Because if you're catching, your instinct might be to a yeah. little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, I was, you play it to how it's playing out. And I think yep. it's, it's so easy to think. And I've seen it in loads of matches, you know, where you get three or four, you get excited, you start putting the bait out and they don't want it. Or the bream come along. Or whatever whatever yep. it, it doesn't work out for you no so carl at this point rob's on the fish yeah what do you do like you've you've swung one of your rods around have you at that i did yeah because i originally had two two on the island and then we thought you know mm. there's so much water right in front of us so i put one of mine out there then to sort of capitalize on while while yep. they're there sort of then i had actually had a bite as well out of open water as well but then we actually noticed it was showing in between the mm. island to my left yeah this one here so, so in the gap, like, yeah. there's a big gap between two we, we islands. We neglected yeah. it, didn't we? We, we didn't. Yeah. It was our water. Have you got someone straight opposite you down the track there? Yeah. There, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, but they was, were our side, weren't they? Yeah. Where, where, where we'd neglected them, yeah. you know, we'd not punished that bit of water because we're so concentrated on yeah. this stump 
and these fish in front of me that it would just it just got it only got four rods yeah <laughs> can i ask it rob when you when carl swung the third you know his his one of his rods ran into that water can you pick up any rod in these things or does it have to you have to use no we, we're not bothered we pick up anyone's rod like if, i mean there's no rules like no, in terms no. of that's my no. rod that's you know. some, some of the best match anglers i'm gonna say it again billy and jamie you know they work to their strengths so you'll yeah. get one of them in the bivy tying rigs yeah. doing the bags the other one's casting one of them will be playing fish isn't all that and all their setups the same and stuff as well isn't yeah, it they use the yeah, same yeah. kits so it's almost it's seamless they can just seamless. do work yeah exactly yeah. that yeah you know it's just, that makes sense you're 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 you're, you're one you're a machine yeah you know yeah. there's no like i want to catch more than you or my rigs are better you, who does so, it better in that I field? we talked a little bit about match angling and not often a big part of the sort of you know the, the pole style match angling is that you feed and rest areas of the swim is that kind of what's gone on in this bit? Well, you know, the fish have appeared in, a, in, a, in an area you haven't had lines out. Yeah, they've appeared out in a collection. Right. You know, because we've not punted, we put no bait out there. Yeah. We've just, no one said to us either, keep an eye on that section of the pond because yeah. they may, they've just gone there because it's a free bit of water and they've just stayed there. They're not getting punished. They're not getting leads put on them. Hmm. And that, they, that, that, that. So how many rods did you commit? Carl into that area. Just the one, wasn't it? Yeah. Only the one in uh, mm. in between the islands, and yeah. it was just picking off now and again. Picked a fish off each. Is that time. stringer tactics again? Yeah, it was just two bait stringer, yeah. no mm. bait at all. But coming back, like when we originally baited the island swim, yeah. obviously we had no rods there for I don't know how long was it? it must have been twenty four hours. Mm. It was literally the last morning. Yeah, we actually went back to there and come off the open water. This is so. That, hang on, I don't get ahead of ourselves. So. What did you do going into that last? Because obviously now you've got three or four areas that are possible bites. So how yes. did you decide where to fish on that last crucial night when you are in the fight, but everyone else is as well, yeah. seemingly? All four rods are in that same area where we'd done well the previous night. So all in the, to your right? To my right, So yeah. you decided to cut, you, you, you just yeah, quit we on the- Yeah, everything up. Yeah. We've got four rods out there, all, all on yeah. four separate stringers. So you've gone, if they you've gone back in here, yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah, we've got all four rods out there and it's just like, if they come back and then we can nick four or five fish tonight we'll be there, we're up, right? because we're you're up there. thinking that there's no chance tomorrow day whoever so who I honestly thought to the cold going yeah. into that last night whoever is in first place come nine o'clock in the morning has won the bcac just mm. because how it fished in the just daytime fished terrible. just it's so bad everyone was the same talk, talk to me about that night because obviously presumably you you're running on adrenaline at that point like you're not going to get a lot of sleep are you yeah or? most stressful yeah. night in the world wasn't it we <laughs> went to bed early yeah we went to bed at eight o'clock just sat there like staring at the bivy roof no, we were both tired oh yeah yeah loads of people in the swim on the saturday as well loads of our friends come down it was just it was mm. you constantly talking and um it kicked off for me that that first night at midnight that was the time when they really showed and that's when i had my bites yep. up until first light and then it went dead for me and everyone and uh said to carl this is now time to get we were going to try and get some sleep in the day wasn't it was, it? On, but it was yeah. so busy behind us that we didn't we went to bed at eight set the alarm for 12. Get up at 12 o'clock. Hopefully it's like sea world out there mm -hmm. and we can start sitting up with a cup of coffee and catching carp. Alarm goes off, gets up, carp puts the kettle on. What do we hear and see? Nothing. Okay. Devoid. Just mate. dead. Dead. At, at, at this point, are you aware of stuff going on elsewhere? Head torches are on. People are working it. You know, yeah. there's, there's fish somewhere. They're not mm. on us. Mm. You know, and then you hear John Button catching, Ashley Idzard on fish, Jamie Londers are catching and you just... I'm not gonna lie. That that one o'clock in the mirror, we've got to about an hour into it. Dream's over. Mm. They've not turned up. It's just like I know what's gonna happen here. It's gonna play out. We're gonna wake up in the morning, and we've not. We've and not what you added. thought would unfold, like Jamie and Billy would have pulled away in the bay or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Ash down by the pads. Down the other end, yeah. yeah, and we just yeah mm. we had nothing that night. Nothing. Nothing. Not no, dead. Wow. Dead. So, so your prediction of um, of the winners coming uh, um, from someone who's done well up until nine o'clock is completely wrong, then, Rob. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because trust me, I've never seen a match play out like that in my life. So, go on, uh, take us in, guys. What? What? It's like ten o'clock. Did it? you go back to sleep, by the way? Yeah, yeah. About half one, wasn't it? It was just like, it's... what do you do? What do we do? It was, it was literally dead. You didn't think of swinging a rod back round into other areas, or there was nothing to go. Okay. I remember just sitting there and just like Cole's on it like we should try it i'm just like mate this just it, it feels mm. like our area has they've and that's broadlands for you now they move around and like that first night was and that's that the same experience that i experienced all them years ago you would get that eight hour period this time it was during the night but last time it was during the day where you get your chance you catch your fish um and yeah we woke up in the morning like that who's late who's winning and who you was know. winning what was going on it was jamie and billy wasn't it they would have been up there 
Were you surprised that, it, that, that the field hadn't gone further away during the night? How far back were you? I think and it was again, fifth, wasn't it? Yeah, fifth, but it was, you only three fish behind them. When they're That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's like your worst nightmares was yeah. someone's had eight fish in the night, But right? when you're not catching, yeah. three fish seems a mile away. Yeah. You know, it just seems an absolute mile away. When you're hauling, three fish is like 20 minutes work. Mm. But when you're not on them and you're not seeing them and you're not getting, there's nothing happening, how are you going to get three bites How do you pick nothing? each other up at that point? You're, you're just, just hoping, wasn't it, really? More than anything. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, one they've got fins. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there like that. Yeah. Come on, just one show. Yeah. And um, but the turning point was you mentioned earlier one that water level coming up. You know? Okay, so they've let they've let some of the river in. Yeah, we didn't know it up. was just it was. Why on earth do that in the middle of a match, man? It's, it literally changed the game by the sound of it. It, it, it helped us out massively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Massi yeah massively. <laughs> because they 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 started showing on the, they they hadn't shown on the island at all. Not one, not, not one fish. Mm. But we've nicked a couple off the island to begin with, but nothing. Like we should have done. Or Do you feel like, like you still got bait out there at that point? Yeah, yeah, but nothing's been. Yeah, you just felt devoid area. Everyone's still saying it's like you're not you're not catching them off there. It's like man, we're not even seeing them. Like mm. it's, there's nothing happening out there. All our bites are coming in the silt in that channel. Yep. So you saw fish against saw the fish that morning, didn't we? At Literally, once showed off the stump. It was like okay, we got to change it now. Three rods went against there. Yep. And then, yeah. But same cut, same rigs and stuff. No, what, different. Different rigs, yeah. So where okay. I've been catching them on, everyone was saying spinner rigs, yep. and Cole put spinner rigs out, didn't you, to be fair, yeah. on, the, on the island at first. And where I was fishing these little wafters, um, Cole was like, I want to try a wafter on the island. He put this cast in. It was just like, even a bait boat weren't getting it that tight. Mm. It was perfect. Instant, wasn't it? Yeah, in, straight away. And it was just like, okay. <laughs> got to put all these, like I said. Yeah. And then before you know it, we was like, but at this stage, it was fishing well. All it was 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Ash Izzard down the pads down here, he's carving it up. He's got, and we went from us getting one to him having two. He's got a double take. And you're just like. Not what you need when you feel like you're getting yourself back into it. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're only two fish behind now. Yeah. You know, yeah. Coles has nicked one. They're in like seventh. And now they're in like fourth because they've nicked two mid 20s. And then you hear stories of Billy and Jamie catching. And you're just like. How's this happening? Like we're, 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 and then I caught another one. They'd go and catch another one, and it was just like constantly cancelling each other out. And then even pegged twelve on it as well. That was a joke at the end. I so I kind of that. feel like <laughs> I, feel, I, feel, I feel like at this stage you're you're within striking distance, but you're not first or second or, or even third. No, mate, we we was second, third, fourth, first, second, and they, they couldn't keep up with it. Yeah, you know, I'm ringing the marshals. Who's winning? We don't know. Yeah. You know, so well, at some point it just becomes we've just got to catch, keep catching fish, and, and what what will be will be. Yeah, that last hour I have never seen. Bearing in mind how how <laughs> terrible we thought it was in a fish. Yeah. Until you got this last, the last hour was a joke. You know, bearing in mind peg twelve who they were winning to be fair at the start. Yeah, they they, all, seven it, it was, fish straight yeah, away. Yeah, done they? seven fish straight away. It was mm. like they was in second place. Mark Sawyer in first for most of it. Now they're in fourth because it was crazy. But last half an hour going to that. The lads in, bearing in mind, we're in first at this stage. Yep. We're in first. We've got ourselves. We've had like another two or three fish. We're in first. There's half an hour left. Two lads in 12 that pretty much unknowns really, isn't they? Yeah, they've they never, don't know they were. They mm. know they were. Just, they get one. The camera crew around our swim, yep. you know, we're in the lead. They get the call. Yep. Ash Izzard's <laughs> gone a bit slow at this stage. I think he'd gone into, no, this is right. We was in first. Ash Izzard was second. Mm -hmm. These lads were in like fourth, something like that. And Billy and Jamie were in third or something. Half an hour to go. Peg 12's got one in. All the cameras shift down there. As they're down there, Cole gets one. And we're just like, no, I hooked one. That's a lie. That's I, it. Yeah, I yeah, hooked one. Did, yeah. I hooked one. As I'm playing it away from the, the thing, grating. And I'm just like, I'm caught on line, Cole. And you can see the line coming out the water, mm. going up into the tree. Oh so my I'm, God. Yeah, yeah. just. This is this is a fish. We're back to we're back to how it was at Kingsley Pine. Yeah. <laughs> you know where we need this fish. And the stakes are higher. Yeah, yeah. There's ten minutes to go. I've got one on. They've called the. I said, well, we, 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 "Hangman, you know it's just the fish is sitting out there yeah. in open water. What, what's the rules? We can get the boat out. The marshal will go out in the boat. He will do his in best your, through your water. Through your water. Right? Yeah. So this is potentially like game yeah. over. Yeah. They put a boat out across two foot of water on the island. We're not going to get another bite. There's ten minutes to go anyway. Yeah. Nightmares. You just need this one. But when it needs, yeah, yeah, it's got to come in regardless. So he's literally, I put the rod on the floor completely slack. So I didn't want to put too much pressure mm. on the fish. And uh, no, it was, it was a slight, sorry, there was a slight yeah. 
it was taut. Yeah. You know, and um, Marshall it took him ten minutes in it to get the boat. They've finally got the boat into the swim, got the life jacket on, and someone screamed, shouted out, "Like your line's gone slack." I was like, "How's that gone slack?" Because it was like taut, yeah. and the fish is there. I just picked the rod up. It's, just, it's on. It's on. I'm playing it in, it's and I was like, it. "It just, it just." <laughs> Just wiggled its way off. Yeah. Couldn't write that, could you? No. I'm just <laughs> like, and I, and, but at this stage, as the, um, as is happening, Peg Twelve have got another one. They got two, and you can see you're watching. <laughs> yeah, Carl, you can presumably. see MBI. You can see MBI. It's yeah. just straight. They've you got love, another one on. Yeah, you know, and if that is like a twenty-three pounder, that puts them into first. Mm -hmm. So, with three minutes to go, I'm playing one. They've got two in the net, so they've got theirs. There's a secure. Yeah. So on paper. They're in first place. If I lose this, we're not in first place. If I get this in, <laughs> if I if I land this fish with three minutes to go, if as long as it's bigger than seventeen pound, yep. I didn't know that at the time. It, was, it could have been thirteen. It right? could have been could thirteen. Have, could have been ten. Yeah. Could have been a brain. This, <laughs> I don't is, know what, I don't this know is the I'm, most mate, ridiculous. And it you've got, got fifteen got, minutes to get it in or something after you've the hooter. Got ten right? minutes. Ten. There's forty people behind us. <laughs> They've got two in the net. Ashes yeah. aren't at this point was probably too far behind to catch up. So it is literally like. How big mine is, if I land it, if I don't, we're going to come second. Yeah. Anyway, we get it in. Danny Hang on it. a minute. You get it in. Get it in. You've got the net. What are you, what's going through your oh, head? I've jumped you... in. Yeah. Up to my knees. That's how yeah. sort of yeah. height you're allowed in. No, you've got Rob Hughes yeah. in the background commenting. It was yeah. manner from heaven for Rob, this yeah. is, isn't it? Yeah, like, he's literally, the If you've got to ham it up, it's going to be now. Like, So you've jumped in, Carl. No, and... Literally, when it, the fish has surfaced. Have you got any idea how big it is? It was a good one. It was a good one. Yeah. Common. Yeah, you could see. It's it like, was... Oh, we need this. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Are you talking to each other at this point? Yeah. 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 You know, I'm, I'm like, can't get the... <laughs> it's, just, it's, 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 it's such a nervous. I'm just, yeah. When it went over the net, it was just like, what happened? Yeah. Well, that's bigger than thirteen pound. You know, that's. How did you know with that degree of accuracy that you needed something bigger than that? Oh, we got told. Didn't we got we? told. Yeah, they'd weighed their fish. Yeah, we yeah. as as so they've they've weighed them and stuff, and we knew what they needed, yep. what they had. Sorry, and it was like they were beating us by like sixteen pound. So this okay. fish had to be over sixty. I'm looking at it again. That's mid twenty. Yeah, that's a good fish. We've done it, and we didn't even get time to com com compute what we've just caught. Yeah, there's one minute to go. I'm looking at the marshals and going, "How long left?" They're like forty five. 44. And you're looking at Peg. You're looking at the you're constantly peg behind you. They've yeah. had two in the last 10 minutes. They're on them. Yeah. And you're like, they get another one now. It's, it's over, isn't it? And they've got 38, 37. Da -da -da -da. Cole's wad's gone. Oh, oh no. we're just like, <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> like, you know? Got it in? Yeah, got it in. Got yeah. it in. So, home and host. Yeah. Just done. You know, um, the cherry on the cake, you know. We knew as we were playing that in, who it goes, who goes yeah. as he's playing it. So we couldn't even celebrate, really. No, it was just like, <laughs> I'm just jumping all over Cole as he's playing this fish. <laughs> oh, and what um, went. yeah, it was it's just mad. madness. I've Do, never felt. Does it sink in? It didn't for about a week odd. It mm. didn't. Did you jump in? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it customary, right? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter what match Absolutely. you're in. You've got it. Yeah. It was yeah, cold. what a moment. It's just cold, was, yeah. Yeah, because they obviously, <laughs> oh, that water went in. River in. Yeah. yeah, so it went it, freezing. It was <laughs> and what, what, was what was the, what was your first thing, the first thing you did? Do you, do you phone the missus, Rob? Like, do you know, I found my dad. Did you? My dad's been there from the start, you know. Um, yeah, I phoned my dad straight away. I was just like, you can believe this. He's like, I've been watching it. You know, he's, oh, he's, watching, he's yeah. keeping tabs, yeah. Yeah, my dad got me into fishing and, you know, here I am now sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah, it was a, uh, so yeah, it was a mad one. I remember finding my mum as well, because my granddad passed away mm -hmm. um, about two months prior, and I've kept his little memorial um, uh, page thing yeah. um, in the van. Yeah. And I remember like going into the match thinking, I've got to do this for him. Yeah. You know, and uh, what a yeah, moment. I'm crying to my mum. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's mad. Um, but I mean, Carl, what, what about you? What did um, what did you do with yourself when, when you'd, I'm you'd just left that speech? I less like for. It don't happen, does it? No, because it's so hard. No, the to odds win. are tiny, aren't they, to, yeah. to do this? Mm. Yeah. So to actually win it, yeah, it's crazy, crazy mm. feeling. Yeah. yeah you to just, win. Well, you always can, compete with the the yeah. mind frame of we can win it this year. Yep. But doing it is some feat. Yeah. Right. Massive congratulations, gents, because that's like if you're going to win it, that's how you win it. Isn't it? That's what everyone said as yeah, well. Yeah, everyone yeah. was best like, final ever. Is that the, is that the kind mate, of final they reckon? Yeah. Yeah. The closest is, is yeah, definitely. That's yeah. what everyone wants. That's what that's yeah. what the, the watching public want, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm sure it, I'm sure your lives would have been a lot easier if you run away with it. But 
Um, yeah. Sometimes you want it like that, though, in a way, mm. a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. all good to run away with it, yeah. but sometimes yeah, it makes it, such a better final. Yeah, yeah. That, that buzz at the end, you can't. Yeah, you just you can't. Yeah, and and the other boys, like obviously, they're smart and they're wounded because yeah. they've come close. Do, do they come and congratulate you? How's yeah, that? Everyone yeah. does. Yeah, everyone yeah. does. Yeah, it's a good. It's a good. No matter who wins, you know, you're. It's their moment. Yeah, you know, it's supposed to be their time. Yeah, you know, you can't. They've won it. Um. Beyond this victory, you know, I think we spoke just before you it's came nice in. There, really. Yeah, hey. there they are. So, I mean, actually, for the record, guys, what what were the what was the winning margin and sort of how how was the spacing across the top three? If it weren't for that, yeah. If it weren't for that, so the last Carl's last fish was a good one, and it was like twenty eight pound. <laughs> so if you take twenty eight pound off of that, yeah, because it was. You know I mean, yeah, that wasn't the winning. It wasn't the winning fish. No, it was so close. It's really like I mean, look, eleven yeah, fish, yeah, ten yeah. fish, ten fish, nine fish. That's incredible, isn't it? Mate, and um, two fish from them. Yeah, <laughs> take take twenty pound off twenty eight pound off. Of so us because, close, actually. Isn't yeah. it? When you look at the numbers, there's a fish in that. In, look at that in nine in fish, one. ten fish, ten yeah. fish, eleven fish. It's crazy. Doesn't get a tighter. But before we came in here. Rob, you were you were sort of we we were looking at the names on the trophy here, and uh, I think is it two or three people, three pairs have won it twice ever. Mm. Um, can you dare to dream that that you could do it again? Or Mate, history can be, repeat itself. I've got the right partner. You know, he's an absolute machine. Yeah. Um, like we're, we're we're going into yeah. We're not going there to make the numbers up next year. No. We want to try uh, and return. And yeah. Carl, it hasn't. It hasn't dampened your enthusiasm, having done it, having completed what you set out to do. No, it's given me the drive to want to try and win it again, to be honest. Yeah. Has anybody any, ever won it back to back? Yeah. Look at the last two. Kev Hewitt, Kev Hewitt. Wow. Kev, Kevin okay. Bart, Kevin Bart, Kevin Bart, Wayne and Ryan, Wayne and Ryan. Well, surely that, that, that's what you're going for, no. isn't it? It's to get up to that level. Yeah, yep. definitely. Yeah, yeah. It would 100%. be nice. 100%. They're, they're, they're the elites. I mean, you've. It, it's almost the impossible thing to do like to plot your way through this is almost impossible because there are so many variables wrong oh, mate. as yeah. you alluded to like weather draws other anglers yeah. so much can go wrong is it what you've done is plot your way to something which is almost impossible to repeat but you're going to try absolutely yeah, gonna yeah going like on. i say we're not going there to make the numbers up or have a fish together it's you know they're competitive there's, there's, can you can you do it better can you can you do it better than you absolutely. did this i think absolutely. we can yeah, yeah. remember this is our first year together yeah you know, and we, we've both, we've fished well, but we've learned a lot from, if we get back to Broadlands, we've learned so much. And the yeah. final's there again next year. Is it? You know, we know, we know, we know Barston at the back of our hands. Is that you know? why you're qualified? You've signed up qualified, for Barston, yeah. 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 And that's an awful lot of carp need to be caught to get through, yeah? Again, depends on the section. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there's flying sections and there's slightly more tighter sections. Mm -hmm. um, again, it just, it's on that draw again. You don't put yourself in this position where, you're up against it from the start. Yeah, you yep. know, make life as easy as you can. You know, to get yep. through. And then we got St John's. He's caught them all out of there. You know, yep. so you know, you know it well enough as well. Know it well enough, yeah, yeah. caught <laughs> out of there. That's what I mean. You know, yeah, so that's good. Yeah. And if we get back to Broadlands, who knows? We learned last year. Who knows? Yeah. You know. Um, can I ask before we finish? Um, did you do the sensible thing and save the money, guys, or did you treat yourself? Like, what was the what's the gig? You know, you've got your both ten grand better off. So yes, yes. Anything nice. special, or, or you he's done the sensible thing and stuck it in the bank? The missus got a grand of it, bless her. <laughs> <laughs> I think she spent it on a little one. Um, but yeah, it's in the bank safe. Fair um, play. Yeah. Need it to uh, need to just to, um, to buy some pay out, Yeah, to pay out pay out for next year. <laughs> I don't get to fish my. I don't. I've, I've fished. I think two nights this year for myself. Yep. So my match fishing now is my fishing. Yep. You know, that's what I'm so revved up for it. That's mm -hmm. my time to really enjoy my own angling. You know, I don't fish outside of, I'm on the bank four days a week. Yeah, I can't go back to the missus and little one on a, on a Friday and go, I'm going fishing for the weekend, babe. You know, so. She knows these that, yeah, yeah, these weekends are special to me. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah, it will trip to a holiday and stuff, but. Yeah, the money's in the bank. Yeah, <laughs> nice. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. That was a, that was a brilliant, yeah, thanks a lot, brilliant James. sort of account of what it is like to, to win a competition that most of us will never even get close to. So, Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. Cheers. The Thinking Tackle Podcast.